participate in a Don and Mike show contest? How about this? You or a member of your household can only win once for 60 days. You must comply with any age limitations for each contest. For complete contest rules, send a self addressed stamp envelope to the mighty WJFK, PO Box 3649, Washington, D.C., 2007. Thank you, and God bless. Everybody loves Don and Mike. Chapter 1 on terrorism. We cannot let terrorists and rogue nations hold this nation hostile or hold our allies hostile. I think war is a dangerous place. Nobody can threaten this country. Oh, they may be able to bomb a buildings. You know, let me let me talk about Al Qaeda just for a second. I made the statement that we're dismantling senior management, and we are. Uh, our, our people have done a really good job of hauling in a lot of the key operators. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, Abu Zubaydah, Ramzi, uh, Ramzi al Sheeb, or whatever the guy's name was. And we're fully committed to working with both sides to, to, to uh, bring the level of terror down to an acceptable level for both. I couldn't imagine somebody like Osama bin Laden understanding the joy of Hanukkah. The ambassador and the general were briefing me on the vast majority of Iraqis uh, want to live in a peaceful, free world. And uh, we, we will find these people and we will bring them to justice. You're free. And freedom is beautiful. And, uh, you know, it'll take time to restore chaos and order. But we we're order out of chaos, but we will. <laughs> wow. Not edited for your enjoyment. Wow. <laughs> That's fun. Beautiful. Uh, man, oh, man. <laughs> Hello. 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 Hello to Mr. Shannon. Uh, I have pretty new headphones that I'm getting used to, Mr. Shannon. Although we do have uh, jokes. Uh -huh. and, and, man, they're, they're so good, these jokes from Bitman. Are they, Mr. Shannon? I think, that they, I think they might. I think that they might actually stay in the hopper one day. In the hopper. Because I can give you a real joke. I'd love to hear a real joke. That'd be absolutely marvelous. That I was forced to hear yesterday oh. at a uh, at a party. Uh -huh. at, at a party. At a party. For my uh, brother-in-law, at Doug. This uh, joke was told uh, not uh, by me. Hi, Doug. Not, not by Doug, by someone who was there. Uh -huh. Okay. I'll tell it in Scott Shannon style. And it's, it's well, a now, are you, if you're telling it in Scott no, Shannon it's, style, it's a Bush joke. You're, you're covering yourself. No, it's a Bush joke. I'm, really? Listen, are, are, do you stand by this joke? No. Give me your phone number. <laughs> no, it's an old, <laughs> you, you already have my phone number. Oh, that's right, yeah. Hello. Yes, go ahead. So, the guy at the picnic, uh, picnic table yesterday says... Mm -hmm. Uh, George Bush and the Pope are going on a boat trip in Crawford, Texas. Okay. Uh, of course, the press is there along the shore watching them as they row out. Yes, Mr. Shannon. The Pope's funny hat blows off into the water. Yes. George Bush gets out of the boat and walks on the water to pick up the Pope's hat and bring it back. Wow. And do you know what... Incredible! Do you know what the liberal media had to say, how they reported that? How? George Bush can't swim. I, uh, I wanted to, I wanted <laughs> to punch the guy. Yeah. No. I mean, it's, it's one thing to get, you know, these things. Uh -huh. Right. But that was a guy really telling the joke. Thinking it was funny. And, and then it was an awkward moment because someone who... Oh, so did, you bring that, did you bring that DVD or that CD? And played it for him after that. I'm just wondering, after he did it, was it made even worse by like a pause because he had made you think? No, no. With his wonderful, funny joke? Here's exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. It went over like... <laughs> and right? Somebody said, maybe that's the wrong room for this. Even though we were outside, they were spe you know, everybody yeah. speaks in sure. theatrical terms. Of course. Then someone who wasn't at the table comes back to the table. And somebody says... Oh, you know what? He missed that joke. No! Ah! No! <laughs> Tell that joke. And everybody else at the table goes... I, I mean, it, it wasn't an out loud thing. Everybody uh -huh. just kind of mumbled, Oh, no, no, not again. Not the no, joke again. No, no. So then he says, the guy who told it, he said, 
well, being as you're giving me th this great uh, feedback, uh -huh. I'm not telling the joke again, yeah. which puts the guy who just came back from the bathroom, he's in the awkward position where he now has to say, well, isn't somebody going to tell me the joke? Yeah. <laughs> and everybody now is saying, no, don't tell the joke. So then his wife tells the joke. Uh -huh. Right. And, she, and, and it gets the, the absolute same response sure. uh, again. <laughs> Where they where they hear it on Rush? Is that where they hear the joke? Know. It was you know, Mike. This oh, is, oh, oh, oh. where's my oxycontin? This is why I'm against uh, the mingling of families. Uh -huh. Yes, this is not a good thing. This, this is, is why everybody there, the nuclear family, should stay by themselves. It was just supposed to be a nice little picnic. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wendell, right you know, Wendell, I know you're a right winger. When you walk by the window and give me a weird look during segments <laughs> like this, it makes me nervous. Politics <laughs> should not be discussed on a nice picnic. <laughs> there he goes. Exactly. Now he's giving me a weird look. <laughs> hey, did you give me another weird look when he went by. I saw Winner! That, yes. yep. Winner! This, this, this bullet and this headline just in from Wendell Hall. You scare me when we're doing when we're doing politics. George Bush can't swim. swim. You just gave me a weird look. It wasn't weird. Wendell, you know you frighten me on any level. You know? <laughs> now, Wendell, listen. Not not when I'm off the air. When I'm What's off that? the air, we're chatting. We are. We could not. We're fast friends. I'm not allowed to look at you. We're great buddies. When we're on the air, Wendell's a different machine. <laughs> Engineer Wendell Hall. Hey, NRA man. Yeah. Re Republican. <laughs> Uh, did you like the joke? Did I didn't George? hear it. Okay. What was it? Okay, here it is. <laughs> now I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> what did happen? Tell it to him without, without the, uh, the, the Scott Shannon voice. All right. Bush is on a boat in, at, in Crawford with, with the Pope. Okay. So they're rowing out to the middle of this pond. And, of course, the, the press is there watching this. And the Pope's funny hat blows off. So Bush goes into the water to get the hat, except guess what? He walks on water. So he walks in the water, picks up the hat, brings it back to the Pope. You know how the media covered it? They said Bush can't swim. Yeah. See. Okay. I, so that, that's confirmed, then. Hey, uh, right wing and left wing alike. But no crowd. Is that funny? Yeah, no, no crowd. Yeah. That's just not even funny on any level. Well, it really is. Would you get mad if we asked you your name? What? What do you mean? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, play, play along. <laughs> yeah. Wendell, what is the mag? That's not one of your gun magazines, is it? No, You're, it's right. wireless system design. Ah, cool. Just so people just to always to get a background, what would be uh, what would be accenting your desk today in the areas of publications as far as magazines? What would you have? Uh, Our engineer Wendell Hall. Uh, what, uh, what would you have? You have probably shooting sports USA, American <laughs> Hunter. Uh, um, he's not making it up. Oh, no, he's no. not. Hunter terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they send that to Liddy. <laughs> yeah, but he hasn't worked here for years. But you just kind of let the subscription roll over. <laughs> We're still on what uh, level yellow or something? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's sad yeah. disappointment. That's good. That's mm -hmm. called a payoff right That's there. You're fine. All right, thanks. And again, you are your, your name. He was asking for your name, Wendell Hall. <laughs> oh, you don't have VD. Thank you. Wendell. Wendell does not have VD. Bye, Smoke. But it's fun. See, if he got VD, he'd shoot it out of him. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. There is simply not enough ammunition in the world. Venereal disease and gunpowder don't work. Before we actually start the show, we can do one more because it's okay. our, a new producer's first day. Yes. Welcome, Beth Ann. Yep. She's here. Hello. Who is this, please? This is Beth Ann. Who is this? It's Beth Ann. Your full name, please? Beth Ann McBride. <laughs> Alright, thanks. Enjoy your time back there with Joe. Thank you, bye. Bye. <laughs> hey, she sounds like she's settling right in. Yeah. Thank you, bye, Click. That's she good. Had, she had a meeting. Well, you know what? Let's start the show. <laughs> All right. Hey, All now. Right. I'm talking about a, a, a pep, a pep a rally. I said, hey, now. That we had before the show today with Beth Ann. You can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe you. Hello. Hi, honey. Hello. Hi, Julia. Hold on a second. Rob? Maybe this is a sign from God. Your guys have locked up. No, they haven't. You see your guys? I knew it. Your guys that say the bad stuff? Will the tape work? Let's try it at number three. Number two. Oh, oh is it broken? The fall of the third right. It's broken. Hallelujah. We are liberated. <laughs> Give them a chance. Maybe it's broken. Give them a chance. If it's broken, it's just... Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God, we're still oppressed. Back 
second bigger number. Resistance has failed. Based on a true story, he was a neo-Nazi with one true enemy. Himself, a man of faith, a man of hate, and a soul torn apart. Viewer discretion advised. And good afternoon, Mr. and Mrs. New Producer and all the ships at sea. The country of Iraq has new leadership. And here they are, Dr. Geronimo and President Mike O'Mara. <laughs> Hi, thank you for listening, everybody. Don and Mike show a new episode on this Tuesday. Tuesday. 06, 01, 04. Hi, Don and Mike. Buzz Burbank here. And rabbit, rabbit, rabbit on your bad ass. Right. Uh, hey. Don and Mike show a new episode on uh, this uh, 1st of June, 20 Ot 4. Very exciting. Call us from anywhere in America, 877 365 3636. From Canada, call 800 636 1067. Washington, D.C. on WJFK. You can call us at 202 432 1067. All right. So uh, the new, uh, the new uh, producer's back there. Yeah. B A M yeah. Beth Ann McBride. B A. B.A. is a, that's her new nickname. B.A. And, uh, Not Bam, it's B.A. B.A. She likes B.A. Mm -hmm. She likes B.A. Yeah, well, it sounds, you know. B.A. B.A. Yes. Beth Ann. If, Beth Ann is such. Beth Ann sounds like Edith Ann. Such a, and such a country fan like Daisy Duke name. Beth oh, Ann, man. it's so nice to have you around here, yet, Maggie. My name is Beth Ann. I come working down on my show. I work in Rotterdam. I work down in Charlotte. B.A. is better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. B.A.'s first. I can't get by North Dallas 40. I get, me too. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> now that's enough. Remember the coach in that movie, The Hard Ass? <laughs> B.A.? Yeah. Here's a, a trivia question right out of the, the shoot. Yep. Or as uh, as George Bush would say, right out of the hostile. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> name, name the great scene in film history that B.A. is involved with, and it concerns a Francis Ford Coppola movie. It has to be the Godfather, but I, have, Godfather. but I have no idea. He is the senator. My oh. offer to you is this. <laughs> Nothing. Uh -huh. And I would appreciate it if you would put up the money for the gaming license. Yeah, you're correct. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think you've schooled me on that before as well. Yeah. Told me about that guy. I don't like your time, Mr. Corleone. <laughs> That's the same guy. He plays that same redneck character in a lot of movies. Yeah, yeah he gets his, though. He gets his. <laughs> he doesn't get his in North Dallas 40. No. And uh, at B.A., uh, her namesake, uh, R.B.A., Today's the first day that she's working. Uh -huh. And, you know, it took about two months to get this uh, woman hired and right. get her here. We couldn't be happier because she's overqualified for the position. We think you'll love her. Right. She's the first choice, which is always nice. Right? And uh, there were sexier choices, and I don't mean that uh, physically. Right. Uh, although some of the guys were ready to <laughs> die for. <laughs> it was some dink that uh, worked on the Ryan Seacrest show, on the ah. Ryan Seacrest TV show. Right. And, and he wanted the job, and he said he had a giant Rolodex full of all these celebrities. And it turns mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. he didn't really have their phone numbers. He just had a bunch of publicists' phone oh, numbers. Ah, okay, right. So there was a, a bunch of people that it came from different backgrounds, but we chose B.A. because, well, she's got a good radio background. She does. And mm -hmm. she's us. She's like us. She's, she's old. <laughs> she's... <laughs> She's weather beaten. Mm -hmm. She's been kicked many times by, yeah, by the man. Welcome, Deb. By the man. She's been she's been down. The man's had his foot on her throat before. Welcome to the land of misfit toys. Now, <laughs> she didn't know any of this before. She took, no one likes a jolly in the box. <laughs> she was she was brought in for an interview, and we met her, and everybody was on the best behavior, and right. then had another interview with her, and. Uh, then today was the day that she found out she got the job. Today's the day that she really found out how things work around here. Mm -hmm. Okay. First mistake. I appreciate anyone who's timely, early for work. She showed up at 8.15 this morning. 8.15. 8.15 this morning. She'll be exhausted by the end of the show. 8.15 a.m. That was really, it was really almost awkward because I had only been here five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Shut up. Right. So she, yeah. got, she got here real early. That's good. Uh -huh. you know, that, that's what sure. we want. Good get, sign. Get here early. Mm -hmm. um, she had a chance to meet some of the people here at the station, some of the tools mm -hmm. that work here, mm -hmm. uh, some of the management tools. And then um, we got in and we, we sat. Oh, hold on. Here's another B.A. This is a great B.A. Scott. Yeah, uh, you can't forget uh, B. A. Baracus of the A. Team. Hey, the A. Team, B. A. Baracus. <laughs> was, uh, was that George Papard? No, that was T. Oh, that was the, Mr. T. Was, was, was yeah. Mr. Wow. T. B. A. Baracus? Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, it was uh, the other white guy. You mean the skinny guy that was into nerdy stuff? 
Yes. You mean the guy uh, with not, the, the guy with dark hair? The one they called I, Face? The, yeah, Face. Well, they called the him face? face because his name wasn't B.A. Baracus, Tool. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, that was Rob We're in Rob's knows. wheelhouse. Yeah, this, comes, this, this, this is where Rob gets like like nasty I didn't nasty watch smart. the A-Team, but I'm sure it was, I'm sure it was Mr. T. Well, we I'm not the book. I'm not the A-Team expert. But, no, was, but I remember you an expert. Oh, but, but, but Robbie, give this guy a little s slack. You didn't remember there was a BA on the A team. Brought it up last week. Did I've you really? You yeah. Right? Did you? Yeah. I, I didn't think it was up. that much of a big deal. Well, I guess you do now. Wow. <laughs> well, listen. Um, thank you, my friend. Thank you for listening, Scott. Aren't you glad you called? Thank you. I know I am. <laughs> Three days off really did Rob good. Bye bye. So this girl shows up here today. She's ready for her first day of, of work, and. uh... I come rolling in my regular time. We sit her down, and I, we did not give her the biggest pep talk in the world no? about the radio station. She said, like everybody, when they start to work here, she said, oh, it seems so nice, and everybody seems so nice, and, and all the people are real nice, and the, the station's no, real nice. No, that's what you and, say on your first day, probably. Everybody, everybody seems real nice, and, and we went down the employee list one by one. Just telling her, okay, this guy's an idiot. Watch your back here. This guy, this, this, beware no. here. Okay, you got to make friends here. You got to. Oh, no, you're going to have to go down the hall with this guy. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you, this guy is just a waste. It's a waste. It's a waste for you to put in FaceTime with this guy. But you're going to have to go down every day and at least say hello to this guy to make this guy think that right. you, that you care about his meaningless op opinion. <laughs> and it was like after about five of these that I realized. Hold on, I've got to come up with some positive. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But, because all I'm doing is telling you're, her... You're feeding negative energy into I'm her, but of her, course that's prepping her for the job. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling her Alan's an idiot, Michael Hughes is an idiot, uh, anybody she talks to is an idiot. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, <laughs> Rob, I run out of stuff, Rob says, well here's the good thing, you ha you'll have a lot of fun while the show's on the air. Mm -hmm. Right. Rob said, all the, all the hours before and after the show, you'll hate it. It's it's hell, but you'll <laughs> love it during the show. Yeah. So let's see how she uh, yeah. how she adapts. That's why I try to come in for just that part. Well, you've yeah. got that master. I, I do, and today I you know I said that's right. I could come in and and pretend I was somebody I wasn't today, but I decided I'd come in at the usual, which was about ten fifteen minutes late. Yeah, I, right. I came in late today just to establish things. Mm -hmm. That was okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, welcome uh, BA. She'll be back there with Thanks, doing, BA. doing what it is that uh, that she's doing. Cool. Yeah, BA. Um, the weekend. Oh. What a holiday weekend I had. I don't know about you guys. Was, was yours good? Mine was super. Mine was good. I'll tell you why. I was mine... good. I spent it with my kids. I enjoyed myself. Mine was super. I didn't spend it with my family. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, that that's not the politically correct thing to say. Right. It was horrible weather. I mean, you couldn't do anything, really. But it was true that, you know, my wife has gone back to work. She's at work today. Mm -hmm. God wow. bless her. She worked. I'd like to tip of the cap over the weekend to the uh, weather forecasters, who really I yeah. think last Tuesday or Wednesday were saying, "Hey, it's going to be glorious. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fantastic." And mm -hmm. you know, then it was in the upper 60s on uh, Saturday, and uh, in but it was the, sunny, right? Uh, it, well, not where I was. No, no. cloudy no. and cool. It over was the weekend, cloudy and cool and, and kind of e. And then mm -hmm. just uh, you know, all my girls wanted to do was pool, 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 pool. That's, right. that's what kids want to do. Yep. Most little kids want to go to the pool. I'm oh, I thought you meant they wanted to go to a pool hall. Pool hall. No, well, that, that's the, what we ended up doing because it was so cloudy. And man, <laughs> can they hustle. Wow. <laughs> My eight-year-old, you don't think that she can shoot pool. And uh, I walked out with two, three hundred dollars. That's after that. excellent. And I don't, you know, I don't have any of those warm, touchy stories from this weekend because, mm -hmm. like I said, my wife was working, my kid was working, mm -hmm. and it was my chance to escape. I learned a new game over the weekend. What's that? Concentration. 64. No repeats or hesitation. Category is DJ. I will start. You will follow. Scott Shannon. Rick D. And it goes like that. Wow. We did this because, uh, you know, when the. You know what's sad? <laughs> what? What? Mike acting like a part time dad. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Ab. So, I, I was happy with I'm that. I'm getting ass. You know why I learned that? I'm getting ass. We were doing that and they were doing it and, uh -huh. and we, go, we went to the 105 show for Shrek 2, which everybody else did. And at the 105 show, it was, uh, the, the, it was sold out. And then we get in and they said, well, there's a 125 show. It's, it's 1 o'clock. And, uh, then they, they announce as we get halfway through the line, the 125 show is sold out. But then they have, because all theaters are doing this around the country, that's why Shrek's got the numbers it's got, they're doing a 155 show. So we ended up getting into the uh, theater probably 35 minutes before the movie was going to start, and there's only one choice you have. You have to... You have to amuse yourself. I'm sure you do. I had a blast. I think we were the most amused people in the theater, and the time just went 
like that with Excellent. that little concentration game, and it's a uh, it's a great game. It really you didn't is. do the word the the word jumble on the screen. No, see, I think we didn't rely on the screen because ah. the screen is it's just you old. don't love you don't love yelling out. Oh, it's Keanu Reeves, Mel Gibson. <laughs> My wife wants to kill me, and I yell as loud as I can. <laughs> <laughs> they're the greatest, and I had a great time with them. And they are they're they're at an age now. I think this is going to be this is going to be a brief period of time where I have. A honeymoon period, because yeah. I know that we are just around the corner. Everyone has warned me for years and years and years that I am, I will be facing the gates of hell with uh, with the teen years, with, with teenage girls, that they go kind of crazy with phones. So right now, it's a really good time where, where everything's working out really well. Mike has fun with his girls. They play with lots of toys. Mike will be suicidal as soon as they discover boys. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I, I don't want to overstate it, but I'll be buying uh, some sort of shotgun. <laughs> Just well, to clean. Winner! Just to clean. Yep, I'll talk to him about it. Winner! There Something to clean when the day. I'll put it away. Winner! Under lock and key. I won't touch it until date night. And then when the boy comes over, Winner! I'll just be yeah. cleaning it out in my uh, that's foyer. That's, just, that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. In your Berlinetta. <laughs> always pork in my Berlinetta. <laughs> we, we know a guy. Well, we know more than one guy. I, well, I, I know a guy that's no longer with us that I worked with that. He strapped one on every morning. And I've known a couple of DJs who bring their guns to work with yeah, them. Are you known one? <laughs> and clean them on the air? Mm -hmm. I'll mention the guy's name because he was a great guy and a good friend, Sonny Uberoff. Guy worked uh, with me at the small station in Annapolis and then worked at uh, Mutual Radio Network over as an engineer. And I came in, the one of, one morning I came in and he's got, you know in the movie Taxi Driver when uh, when, when Robert De Niro gets the big long barrel yeah. gun? Uh -huh. He had one. It was it was like two feet long with the barrel, and he had a custom holster for it, and it's on his sidearm. And and I'd walk in, he'd be the first one I'd see, be at his typewriter, type in the news, say morning, Sonny. Morning. <laughs> He's the same guy that my first uh, morning show gig. He uh, greeted me with the with the middle finger. Good, I said, well, good morning, and bam, there you <laughs> go. That's radio. Yeah. Oh, but it was, you know what it was? It was radio. It was I don't know what it is about radio and guns. Before security got real tight around here, and the Liddy show was here. Yeah. Do you? I don't even know if you guys were here because it was like towards the morning. Some guy came in, so helped me with a bleeding, open head wound. We talked about this on. Uh, yeah. The guy oh, and came, in, came in to see Liddy. And he the wanted guy was Liddy in, to see his handgun. The guy was in the Man. lobby with a gun and a wound in his head. That was huh. at about ten till three one day. Like you know something out of the Civil War with a <laughs> white bandage on his head. Like, I want to see you, Lydia. I'm like, whoa. Oh, man. We went in the back door that day. <laughs> and, of course, no story would be would be fitting without the, the late Don Cox, Cox on the radio. Oh, yes, uh -huh. the guy that took you out in the neighborhood and shot guns in the air next to your program director. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Can you imagine that? Wow. Just driving around on a Saturday night. Yeah. I have no, I swear to Christ, I have no idea where we're going. Right. We pull up to a what looks like a pretty nice residential area mm -hmm. in Pittsburgh. He leans over. It wasn't a shotgun. It was a handgun. Leans over to the uh, glove, glove compartment, the glove box, pulls out a gun. We're in a convertible. Right. And just, boom, boom. I go, what are you doing? He says, Bob Savage lives right over there. I said, so? Get, you know, get the hell out of here. And Don Cox was a guy who was not unusual to walk in the studio and he would seriously have his gun taken apart. Mm -hmm, right. He was one of these guys that, that loved, you know, okay, ready? Time me. <laughs> oh my God. The guy's playing a record by the Bay City Rollers, and he's going, there's they're like two minutes and 50 seconds of the record. He goes, okay, time me. I can put it back together in 90 seconds. Go. And then while the radio, S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y, <laughs> night. The guy is putting together a gun. Yeah. When Sonny, uh, down at this radio station in Annapolis, used to have all the cops, they were friends. He, they'd scoop. He'd get scoops cool. down there in, in this tiny little radio station in Annapolis, Maryland. And he would get the scoops. And he had a, what they called one of those little hot clocks. It was a timer clock, so he yeah. could back time things mm -hmm. like the news. And then when he'd have to back time up to the network news. And... He it was break it was breaking always and it, it would be malfunctioning and one time it was determined he said tomorrow morning we're going to we're going to shoot it <laughs> and I'm doing I'm doing a break and, and my microphone was open and in the background you can just hear the <laughs> <laughs> and they were all all his like state trooper friends and 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 Sonny they were out there I always wonder if we had a metal detector here how many people would get through <laughs> at this at this radio station really I, I mean think about besides Wendell. Who we know is the the NRA. W Wendell's a throwback. I mean, Jeff, to, you, you got to have some guys that are into guns. Right. Already. Jeff Hedges, the sales guy, we had him on the show last awesome. week. He's a country gentleman. He's a country gentleman with eight thousand Uzis. <laughs> Darren's on the ankle. If anybody <laughs> dares drive by his property, yeah, it would be interesting, wouldn't it? It really. It really I, I'm trying. To, Madonna. I'm sure she's packing. Oh, I think so. 
Yeah, I there's no doubt. I and uh, listen, I'm not profiling. I swear to God, I'm not. But <laughs> Jag, uh-huh. you know, <laughs> oh, no. the, uh, Mike, I don't know. I don't know what he is. What, yeah. what is he? Where, where, where is Jag from? Haji, where is he from? I don't know. I'm not sure where Jag is from. I know that he is a. Uh, he's not from hmm. Bakersfield, California. I'll tell you that. I'm pretty sure he's not from Minneapolis, St. Paul. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's from India. But yes, he is definitely from out of town. He's yes. not from Wisconsin. I know that. He might be from Wisconsin. He could be from those Wisconsin guys that have those, those that headwear, that headgear. Yeah, what and those guys are all over. With, those? those guys are all yeah, over you, Wisconsin. Okay, wait, so you guys, look. <laughs> look at what I'm looking at here. Man. Hi, I think I'm in the front row of a Willie Nelson concert right now for just one brief moment. Hey. It was just like you know, in Wisconsin, I would imagine. Like there, there, yeah, there's there's a lot of Arabs in Wisconsin. I'm sure that there are mm-hmm. Indians sure and Arabs and everybody else in the state of Wisconsin. You ever been to Wisconsin? I have never been to Wisconsin. Okay, I have. I got news for you. There's like two black people in the whole state. There's one Chinese guy, and that's. <laughs> okay, I'll That's check. it in the whole Let's state. Let's check. I'll bet you the whole a thousand. state of Wisconsin. You're you good. go to like Chinese restaurant number one, you walk in, the guy goes, Yeah, hey there. <laughs> yeah, you want some general chow chicken? Yeah, hey there. Right now, there are a couple of people that are saying, Ah, yeah, right. Like there's somebody from uh, India that lives in Virginia. <laughs> you know, they don't necessarily know that. Yeah. Oh, Mike, yes, I do know that. <laughs> yeah. There's lots of people from all over what the world. What was the last here? time you spent a significant amount of time in uh, in the state of Wisconsin? Uh, a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. <laughs> and you covered the whole state. Yeah, well, I, I grew you up... You throw with... Milwaukee in in that one? Uh, that, as a matter of fact, that's where I went, to Milwaukee. <laughs> to see my brother. The phone with Jag. He is not from Wisconsin. <laughs> ah, where, is, where is he from? <laughs> Originally Minnesota. No, he's I'm kidding. You kidding. That he's, from India. he's from India. He's from India. Yeah. From India. Punjab, he said. Mm-hmm. Or something he, uh, like that. Hey, no, no language like that. Hey, watch, watch out, you. Watch out with the Punjab. And uh, does he have a gun? I did not ask him that. Okay. But I don't think he couldn't carry a gun on that carpet, could he? On the carpet, he flies the work on. Magic carpet. carpet. <laughs> God. Magic carpet. <laughs> it, gets back, it gets back to Aladdin with you, doesn't it? It always gets back to Aladdin. I love Disney. Really. If life was a little more like Aladdin, everything would be fine. <laughs> yes, it would. And listen, Mike, let's put out the word right now. All you... Uh, all of you, I don't want. I don't want to just uh, generalize here. And you don't want to profile. I, I don't want to say Indians or, right. or Arabians or Middle Eastern people. Let me just say, if you're not white with blue eyes listening to us in Wisconsin right now, mm-hmm. right, call the show. Let's do a little check right now demographically. We're on what three or four stations in Wisconsin, right? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Get ready for the parade of just. But we're on Matt in Madison now. Madison and I think uh, Green Bay, Wausau, right. mm-hmm. Green Bay, and maybe uh, Appleton. Maybe you see the phones not yeah. lighting up right now. No, the phones are lighting up right now. <laughs> one, two, three, new line. Four, four. Well, no, the one's well, on, one hold. on hold. One on hold. So that's one's on hold. And I'll but tell you, that just that's going to be a ten second delay. So mm-hmm. that might be right. And I can see that whoever's on line five is from area code nine one six. I know that. What's that? Sacramento. That's oh, of course. Area code two zero nine. They call always. Hello, Don and Mike show. Here's area code 209. Where's that? Hello? Hey, Stockton, California. Stockton, California. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what we're doing here? No. Hi, what can we do for you? I was just calling to see if you guys knew that Mel Carmen's had stepped down as president of Viacom. What? what? Oh, hadn't heard it. Hold on. What? It's no. Like it this morning. No, no way. No, no, you're kidding me. Really? No, no, it's I, not I, possible. Where did hold you on. hear that? Hold it's on a mistake. second. Hold on. Just hold on a friggin' second. No. Impossible. Yeah. No way. You're lying. I saw it on the news this morning. No way. You're Have saying... Buzz check it out. You are saying, newsflash, uh-huh. that Mel Karma's in our boss is no longer our boss? Uh, I'm not sure if he's already done it, but they said he was going to step down. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. Now, I think you're one of those prank callers. No, 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 no. If, no, I, no. if I wasn't so close to the man personally and, and didn't know that your story was 100% crap, mm-hmm. I got half a mind to turn you into the authorities. <laughs> yeah, that's not even funny. I really do. That's not funny. Uh, no, I'm not. All right, sir. All right, enough of this. Uh, when, what would be the time you first became aware of, uh, of, uh, of Mel? Wait, no, I'm talking to Don, sir. <laughs> About 7 o'clock this morning. 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. Eastern Time, sir. That's when Dom was aware of that. And incidentally, every CBS employee got a wonderful uh, personalized email from Mr. Sumner Redstone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. announcing it. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll have more. Listen, uh, suffice it to say, we're on top of it. All right. Okay, Dom? Hey. So now, now, what would you like to say since uh, we, we knew about this already? And, and is there Grant any... Napier loves you. Oh. Nice you know what? Hold on. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Don't hang up. I need to know your name, please, sir. 
Hello? Hello? Yeah, dude, what's your name? Ray. Ray, Ray, what's your last initial, Ray? Uh, v. Ray. V. J, J, V, and you are from Sacramento? Stockton. 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 Well, that's yeah. close enough, right? Yeah, the Asparagus Festival. Hey, congratulations. Uh. Congratulations. Listen to this. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. You have been selected as a charter member in the Don and Mike Exclusive Listeners Club. Hey, listen to that. You are now a registered Don and Mike caller and are entitled to all the privileges that come with said title. Be sure to watch your mailbox for your registered Don and Mike caller sign, right. which is to be placed prominently in your front yard. For your neighbors. You have been profiled, mm -hmm. tagged, and you are now in the book. You're in the book. Good day. Uh, good day, to you, I sir. said good day, sir. Good day, sir. Good day. Good day. Good day. And Robbie, his number? Is 14. 14. Hey, thanks for. Hey, thanks wait a minute. Why, why the in the long face with that? Because I just want to cut as short as possible with this guy. The zeros still exist. Okay. Uh -huh. But in the effort, the multi zeros. Line, yes. It's number 14. The zeros are multifold. Yes. And you know what, Rob? It when, when you me. get a moment to take a look at that book, uh, might be uh, very curious just to see uh, how many members of that club are from Northern California. I can give you a stat in one moment. All right, please. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, listen. I'm sorry. Before we cut you, cut you loose, was there anything else you wanted to say? Good day. Um, there you go. He almost got that. Yeah. yeah, he did. He almost did. Oh, here's a guy from Wisconsin. Troy, area code 608. That's uh, southern Wisconsin, I think. Mm -hmm. Troy? Madison. Madison, ah. Mad City. What's up, Troy? Not much. Um, I am white, but you're not out in Wausau anymore. That was the one reason I was calling, but four people, four black people just moved next door to me, and I'm a little worried, so the numbers have increased since right, the last so you're time you are here. There are four black people in the state of Wisconsin. <laughs> Get out of here. Roughly three-sevenths? Or what would that be? About 30, about 40, what is that, 46%. <laughs> Almost <laughs> half. Almost half. Mm -hmm. And Bulletin, here's a not white guy from Wisconsin. Very good. No. Jim? Jim? Yes, sir. Hello, dude. How's it going? I am not white, and I live out here in the land of the white. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Hold on. Thanks, Jim. we got to go to a special caller <laughs> right now. I, we're up on a break, but let's talk to Spencer in Las Vegas. Spencer. Yeah, the Amazon story is true. It's on R and R online right now. You guys stop with. Hold, hold on now. I'm going to have to conference you with another guy named uh, Chris. Chris who's calling us from Maryland. Chris. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Hey. Yeah, it's true as well. As I don't remember the guy's name, but he's in kind of a feud with another oh partner. Oh my God. Guys, 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 hey, listen, guys listeners, please, listeners, to listen to me now, listeners. You guys, honest to God, listeners, how what, stupid do you think we are? What, do you think we don't know that our boss got kind of pushed out today? What do you really think you're calling us with news that we don't know? But there's someone else leaving as well. The other one, the other one of the heads is leaving in two weeks as well. He put his resignation in today. No, but that's not the point. The point is when you called, you were calling because we were being sarcastic with that guy when we said, no, you're not telling me. My mom's a whore then. See you later. All right, thank you. Thank you for the call. Which guy said his mom's a whore? Chris or Spencer? Yes. She is, and it's legal here in Las Vegas. <laughs> ah, thank you. That's, that's, that's funny. Except those are two guys that dealt with it and went away and avoided, job. avoided the, the very nasty book. We yes. will be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. How are you, Chinese or Japanese? I live in California last 20 years, but uh, first come from Laos. Huh? Laos. We lay ocean. The ocean? What ocean? We are lay ocean from Laos, stupid. It's a landlocked country in Southeast Asia. It's between Vietnam and Thailand, okay? Population, 4.7 million. So, are you Chinese or Japanese? The Don and Mike Show. I bet something really good is getting ready to happen to you today. Thanks to Don Geronimo and Michael Mera. All without question. Thank you, dude. Walker. And now, everybody. Clark, 497. All the stations have stopped doing their Memorial Day 500. They have. They're all concluded. Mm -hmm. And the weekend, you had a great weekend with your kids. I love them. Just kidding you about that, but I'm right. happy for you because you do more with your kids now, really, than you did before, and you're happier now I, uh, in I, a lot of ways. I, I like them. I, I, I truly do. I, a family I, guy. Nice. I, I, you know, what a great thing for a father to say about yeah. his daughters. I like them. No, that is a good. Thing. Yeah, all dads love their daughters, but they're they're just a trip. They're they're fun. And I, if I can very briefly tell you the one bad thing that happened, Elizabeth with her baby teeth is a challenge. Catherine's baby teeth were 
They all fell out on their own. They the the the, the adult teeth came in fine. With Elizabeth, she's got a little more of an issue with uh, with the the baby teeth that just don't want to go, mm. and it's causing the adult teeth to come in a little more crooked than the baby teeth want them. It's very very confusing. When Catherine had like a front baby tooth, uh, when she was losing her baby teeth. It was one of these deals where it was just hanging by a thread. And I said, well, let Dad, Daddy will help you. If it hurts, I'll stop, and we'll see if we can take that out. We walked mm -mm. in front of the mirror. Mm -mm -mm. She was sitting there, and she said, mm -mm. okay, Daddy. I said, now, I won't do this unless you want me. If you want me to try, I can just kind of yank it, and it'll, it'll come out. And I went, and I touched it, and I practically put my fingers on it, and it came out. And there wasn't. Uh, There's maybe a little bit of blood there. Oh, it sounded like rain metal a little bit there. It was. I don't want to, don't want to hear about a little, little girl with a little tooth that's barely hanging. Yeah. You were in there with your big man fingers. Big man know? fingers. Because this is Catherine we're talking about right. here. And I, I barely touched the tooth. <laughs> and, no, no. You gotta save that for the next part of this. <laughs> and I touched the tooth, and it, and it came out, and it was nothing. And Catherine was amazed because she said, Daddy, did it come out? She didn't even know it came out. That's oh. how little. Well, here I am looking at Elizabeth's tooth, which appears to be hanging even by uh, more of a thread. And I said, I'll do this uh, with Elizabeth because it works with Catherine. Both kids. And, and I figured this will help the uh, the other tooth come in a little bit better and everything will be fine. Home dentistry. But I didn't realize that, uh, that underneath my uh, youngest daughter Elizabeth's baby teeth is some sort of titanium like uh, structural rod that is holding the tooth in wow. and I said this will be nothing I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll do this and I, as I did it it was like daddy <laughs> and it was nasty mm -hmm. and I felt horrible and she you know uh, you know I would go like touch her hair with my hand and she'd flinch for about the, the next oh. hour oh. She, she got over it of course but this tooth is just sitting there and you can see the adult tooth in back of it she looks like a shark and and it's really it's frustrating me. It really is because it, it's because it's an, an angle she can't eat anything with it. Wow. What you should do is to distract her, rent her a movie. Has she ever seen Marathon Man? <laughs> no, I'm not that cruel, but I sure I felt like it afterwards because was, there was a little blood involved. Did yeah. you videotape it? It was a, no, I did not videotape it, but I did have a single light bulb over her head uh, in a darkened room <laughs> as she was duct taped to the chair when I did this. Anyway, Daddy's uh, Daddy's not going near Elizabeth's teeth again. Here, have or, more Nyquil. <laughs> <laughs> Open wide. Daddy, I'm sleepy. Open wide. We were in the grocery store over the weekend, and I did buy Ambisol, and she said, Daddy, what's that? I said, it numbs the gums, and she just went on a dead run. <laughs> you know, just on, a, on a dead run. So I'm a, uh, she just she's great, very skillful at avoiding it. I, Daddy, what what happened when we used to go to the dentist all the time? Be quiet. Have, have, some, more, have some more robot thought. We went to one of my favorite restaurants, and uh, the Walk and Roll Buffet, and because uh, and, some things never change. And I, I she had the corn on the cob and she wouldn't eat it. I said, hey, why don't you take a nice big bite of that corn on the cob? Because I know as soon as she bites into an apple or corn on the cob, that thing's uh, going to take a ride. Yeah. But uh, but now, and it's both front teeth. It's both the front baby teeth and you can see the adult teeth are in there already and uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to the orthodontist no matter what. Yeah. I mean, that's that's not avoidable right now. I lost a tooth in a Rice Krispie treat. You should make a Rice Krispie treat. Oh, Rice Krispie treat. Right. Or, or you could just that. tie the string to the to the tooth and just shut the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll do. And I'll call Shemp. <laughs> shut the door. I'll call <laughs> Shemp and Curly and get them to do it. Too. My father did that to us. I'm not kidding. Uh, yeah. Really, with the baby teeth? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> he, I guess. Did. he did with half of your adult teeth, didn't he? You know, I with my parents, I don't know. But I do remember on more than one occasion. Yeah. My dad. Tying a string yes, around think, a little tooth and really just slamming the door and like, ah, there it is. You know, I was not aware of my oldest uh, baby teeth because they came out and they fell out and it was no problem at all. With Elizabeth, I have this, and I guess parents in the past have had this compulsion to, to get rid of those teeth. Right. They look like they're in the way. You want to move them out so the new teeth can come in and come in satisfactorily. In my, in my case, my father got some weird, sadistic, Pleasure Rush out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my brother's going to call the show this week. I was talking with him about unrelated stuff this weekend. Right. And we, we can ask him if he remembers how great it was when one of us would have to get one of our teeth pulled because the other one would be able to sit in the room and watch our dad tie a string around it and then slam the door. Well, like the kid right. would go, ah! You know, the other one of us would be loving sure. it. It's normal to want the teeth to come out because yeah. I know you're eager to complete the bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> I felt so bad, and I, but I yeah. still, you know, you, you, you know what you say that really freaks me out is you say some weird, 
uh, satisfaction or, or compulsion, I, I felt a little compulsive about it. Because mm -hmm. every time I'd look at those teeth and I'd see this thing just kind of wobbling there with the <laughs> with the adult tooth in back of it, sure. I really just wanted to get rid of that thing. And I think I was uh, starting to give her a real complex by going, hey, can I see that tooth? Can I touch it? Can I wiggle it? Because I just want it out of there. I don't yeah. know why, but it's driving me nuts. I don't know if I'm the first parent that's felt that way, but obviously your father no. had a little issue with your baby teeth. You wouldn't want to use my father as a role I model certainly would for not. raising your kids. Not one, not one. Not <laughs> Please do not. Would you like a piece of pie? <laughs> cheddar cheese. Mm. So here you, look, you are loaded with all of this family stuff this weekend, yes. yeah. which is good. Yep. Yeah, which I mean, is good. Yeah, it was uh, all three days with the, uh, with the youngsters, and, uh, and they were a lot of fun. I had three days without mine. Three days of in the fortress of solitude. Well, you love it. God knows you've logged your family hours over there. Love the it. Years. Love it. They're working. They're both working. Oh, my, 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 my. <laughs> gotta work. Gotta work. So I just went to the beach just by myself. Nice. And here's the thing about my wife's family. And I love them, and I ended up having a great time. But they are like a self fulfilling prophecy that no matter what you're doing, if you're down in that area of the woods, woods Eastern Shore, there will be a, a get together. Oh, there sure. will there will be a get together of some type. So there I am, minding my own freaking business. Oh, and a, a great moment on Saturday. I haven't I haven't heard this one before. Uh, before I even tell you this, take a look now. Be very honest. Take a look at the bald spot on the back of my head. And okay. Tell me how. It, I've always said it's like egg shaped, uh -huh. egg size. Uh, right. Is it any bigger? Take a look. Is it any bigger? No. No. Well, it's mean, the same. I mean, I'd tell you. Okay, yeah. now, you, me, you're holding on to what you've got. Yeah. You've been in a holding pattern for a couple of years. Let me tell you what I'm hearing. I'm like that uh, pal of yours in back yet. Let me, <laughs> let me tell you what I'm hearing. I got sunburned on it today. Yeah, we're, oh, driving, oh, I, we're driving down coastal highway at Ocean City, the big, the big highway, and it, it's just me and my car, and, an, and a kid pulls up in a car that's nicer than mine. Okay. He's got uh, whatever the kind of truck you, uh, you have, Mike. He's got a, a Yukon. Um, a Denali? A Denali? He's got a nice oh. Denali. Okay. I got, I got a nice Cadillac. Like this kid's got a nice Yours Denali. Yours is nicer? Well, no, not this Yours kid. Yours is nicer than mine. But this kid pulled up to the light. Does he get it all tricked up and stuff? Yeah, now he's got, uh, besides the fact that it's got, like, the custom paint job, he has the uh, the rims that are spinners. Spinners. Ah. So, you know, even when he's sitting, when the car's not moving, these things are still going round and round. And he's got on a bandana... And he's got on a baseball cap sideways. Okay. Mm. Uh, let me point out, because the race is always a topic on this show. Yes. Color of his skin, white as the driven snow. Okay. Right. So, yeah, well, good, yeah, good. That's fantastic, Rob. <laughs> you normally associate spinners and uh, tricked up uh, Hummers and uh, cars like that with brothers. That's uh, that's usually the, you know, when I, when you watch that so, show on TV, what's it called? Pimp, Pimp My Ride? Pimp right, My Ride, right. 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 So, mm -hmm. I pull up to a light, and now, it, listen, I'm 45. And I'm driving this car, which is not tricked out, but I like it. And I'm proud of it. And this kid pulls up. And when I say kid, I mean, he's maybe 18. Really? And he pulls up in this thing and he's got the... <laughs> you know, meanwhile, out of mind, you got... Uh -huh, honey, honey, you're yeah, yeah, such a faggot. And I'm... I'm just sitting at the light, and I was really just admiring his car. Mm -hmm. I was looking at it because I was captivated by the spinning wheels. Sure. At, and the windows are down because it's night, it's like 70. Mm -hmm. And he says, Hey, Baldy, what are you staring at? Hey, now, get out of the chute. No, we're, we're, at, a, we're at a stoplight. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've been called things before. I've been called <laughs> nasty. old man. Mm -hmm. I've been called old timer. I've been called... A hole. Mm -hmm. This is a first. Yeah. All I'm doing is looking at the guy's car. Baldy. Hey, Baldy. What you looking at? So what? You know what I do? What? I turn to look the other way because I'm positive he's not talking to me. Because mm -hmm. I'm in the middle lane. He's to my right. There's a car to my left. So I turn to look the other way, giving him the full <laughs> shot of my back. Oh, and he goes, Hey, Baldy. Baldy. And I turn. And, and it's a kid. And he's just. Is there anybody else in the car with him? No. It's just a kid in the. <laughs> and then, of course, when he pulls away, it's one of those. <laughs> I mean, I had to. Excuse me, I had some spittle coming out there. Yes. I had to, you didn't get a retort? Well, I had to fight. The, here's the thing. We're at a stoplight. You didn't respond? Mike, I didn't have to. He peeled out. No. He peeled out. Did what you am I chase do? him? 
You know, Mike, you know from a football fight or a hockey fight, it's not the first guy that gets penalized. Right. It's always the second guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. So he takes off from the light. I think, now what am I going to do? Like go 80 miles an hour down, you know, and finally pull up with this kid and go, yeah. hey, listen, it's only an egg shake. <laughs> Bald, but baldy, rich kid. And all you were doing was admiring his car. Pretending yeah. to be Eminem, dumb spinners. Uh, but I never got a chance to, uh, but I was looking for him all weekend. Yeah, sure. All weekend. And here's the problem. Down there in Ocean City, there's way too many kids with way too much bling. Right. That there's, mm -hmm. these cars are everywhere. And every time I'm looking for this kid, because it was a maroon, what was it, Denali, is that the name of it? Yeah. Right. Denali, I'm looking for him, trying to find it by the spinners. Because all weekend, all I'm doing is looking for this kid to say, I'm not bald. Right. And I could not find him again. <laughs> did you buy a bandana? So I've heard no. I've heard, and I've heard a lot. I wore. I did wear a baseball cap on the way home today. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot. I've not. I've not heard. Uh, hey, Baldy. So the thing about Frida's family is, even on a weekend like this past weekend, where I'm going down there by myself, mm -hmm. uh, as it turns out, there was a gathering. There was, a, and my my mother-in-law love her. We had her on the show last week. Says, listen, why don't you come over to Doug's? It's Doug's birthday. It's my brother-in-law. I said, this, nice. it's not Doug's birthday. It's, Doug's, well, it's a pre-birthday party. Come on over. There you go. Come on over. You're part of the family. Come over. So I, got, I was not looking forward to it because I'm antisocial and because Frida wasn't there. And I'm, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, well, it's, it's the family. I got there, and as it turns out, I had an outstanding time. I, I stayed longer than I thought that I would that I would stay hmm. and I, I came away I came away from it thinking that I, I'm now part of this this thing that I've mocked for so many years mm -hmm. about the because Frida's family's out of control I mean they're out of control with family stuff right, right? right. they don't do anything alone you can't okay. you can't say I'm thinking about going to the store sure six or seven of them pile in the car with you <laughs> they, them. they say let's all go together yeah. you know there can't be a weekend where God forbid you're just sitting by yourself someone has to call you and say listen are you sitting by yourself well, you didn't have the fortress of solitude. No, then. I didn't. you had. Huh. You had family. I did not. I did not. And uh, and I'm. I guess I'm the better for okay, it. That's good. I guess I'm the better for it. I had a. You seem rather perky. I had. I had a good time. I enjoyed myself with all of them yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I want to tell you right now, the best part about going to this thing yesterday without my wife being there. Now keep in mind, it's her family. Right. But the best part is that I can talk about my wife. And I never realized this with these members of, of her family. Right. When she's not there, oh. do you know that they all love hearing the stories that I have to tell about there her? There you sure. go. You know, they, so you were a popular guy. Uh, you know, I didn't know. I, if, if I'm in a social situation, I'm like anybody. I got some. I'm sorry, but your wife's ears were burning yesterday. Yeah, I, I got stuff that I can talk about in any social situation. I can hang with anybody. But this was a family thing. And I was sitting down, had a beer with my uh, brother-in-law on the topic of. My child bride came up, and then the next thing, you know, I said, oh, listen. He says, what about this thing? And I said, oh, what about this thing? Can I tell you about this? And then we started laughing and laughing. <laughs> and and as it, tur as it turns out... That's a good thing. As it turns out... They all feel like I do. Uh -huh. <laughs> they all, you know what I mean. Yeah, on those points. They all love her, but, right? but she's not there, so... Let's talk about it. <laughs> and, uh, it was not that we spent every second talking about my wife, uh -huh. right? But and I'll and, and I know that I'll get called on the carpet on this. She won't hear this today, but someone will tell her sure. about it. I I started it. I just you to, initiated sorry, the discussion was, about your uh, your wife. Well, I think my brother-in-law said something to me like, "How is your wife's job going?" Right. And I said, "Yeah." He said, "How?" He didn't say your wife. He said, For, "How's Frida's job going?" I said, "Well." You know, to hear her tell it, it's great, and it is, and it is great, but it's sickening great because here's the thing, and I applaud my wife. She's going back into the workforce. She went to school. She's getting something done with her life. She's not sitting on her ass. But because she had all this time when she was raising our kid for this 18 years, and now she's back in the workforce, she loves it so much. It's nauseating. <laughs> she loves it so much when she'll come down in the morning and say. What do you got to do today? I said, oh, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this. And then she said, not me. I love going to work. I'm going to go to work with all these people that are my friends. And I'm going to go down early because they need some help. And I might stay late afterwards. And I'm, I'm working again. And it's happy, happy. So great. And I was just telling my, my brother-in-law, I said, she does. I just want to smack her. <laughs> and, then, and then everybody started uh, 
piling on. Right. So to speak. So that ended up being very nice. I got drawn in to that spider's web, sure. but found out that I guess I'm a part of that spider's web. That's good. That's so, so that was an enjoyable experience. You told them stories, and I take it they told you stories as well. Yeah, yes, they did. Oh, that's very yes, good. Yes, that can be handy. Exchanging of information. Yeah, and everybody's filing and, and putting things in their little mental Rolodex. Now, the guy with the worst job in the world, I guarantee that this guy does not go home and, and tell his wife how much he loves his job. Saturday, Ocean City, Maryland, crowded 250,000 people down for Memorial Day. There's a guy by World's Gym, again, out on Coastal Highway, the main drag. Mm -hmm. It's Saturday. How do you get people excited to come into a gymnasium? Well, they've got a pickup truck that's backed up the coastal highway, and it says World's Gym on it. Right. And there are two chicks in bikinis. Uh -huh. So, of course, everybody's slowing down around 65th Street when you see this. But it turns out people aren't slowing down to go to the gym. People aren't slowing down because there's chicks in bikinis. It's because they've got some schmuck dressed in a gorilla suit. Uh -huh. <laughs> and he has on a muscle shirt, a wife beater, that says World Gym. Now you're a he's dancing. Crowd. He's, he's waving. Is he in between the two girls? Yes, he is. Yeah. Yes, he is. And now nobody, nobody stops to go into this place. It's one fun town. But, but the traffic, I am not kidding you. And I turned around, going the other way, uh -huh. backed up. Because I, I, on my odometer, I looked four and a half miles oh. backed up from 122nd sure. Street down to about 65th Street. All because there's a guy in a monkey suit. That's a good thing. Wearing the uh, wearing the muscle shirt. So was that the high point of your entertainment weekend? As far as the was that the most entertaining thing you saw? Except for the guy. Did saying, you drive around the block a couple of times to see the uh, the monkey? <laughs> you know what I did too. I did pull across the street and park uh -huh. <laughs> just to watch it. And I called Rob because I because uh, Rob was at an appearance. Rob called me early Saturday and he was having a great time. Rob loves Rob loves doing a good personal appearance. Yes. And uh, loves sharing the excitement of going out and meeting our listeners. And when you book me for a personal ex uh, appearance, you get the excitement that is part of the WJFK weekend. <laughs> this uh, personal appearance was at uh, Patriot Harley Davidson, and hi to the fine folks there. I would say this before you, you tell us what happened, that in the event that you were going to hire anyone at this entire facility, mm -hmm. who would be less likely to, uh, to convey motorcycle dude... <laughs> It would be Rob, Rob. I wore like. a Rolling Thunder pin. <laughs> I did. It did good for you. Um, it was it was actually very cool because this Rolling Thunder is a big thing that the veterans do on Memorial Day. Come weekend. on, just tell them the good part about the noise. There was like maybe 500, <laughs> at any time, 500 running Harley Davidson motorcycles in the parking lot. Very cool. And when I got Nothing there... Nothing sounds like a Harley. I mean that. That's a mean series. And when I got there, we were setting up for our wonderful appearance and included one small... 10 inch amplified speaker so I could make announcements. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> and I said it. about sounded like yeah. this, right? Hey, I want to say hey. How you doing? I'm Mike. Mike, you keep doing that. Hey, I'm Rob Spear from the Donna Mike show. Rob Spear from the Donna Mike show. Hey, that's Mike about 100 times hey, loud. Hey, Rob Spear from the Donna Mike show. Hey, Rob Spear from the Donna Mike show. Hey, Rob your, your mother sews socks and how. <laughs> so I set the speaker up on the stand, and so help me, the manager of the Harley place comes out and says, Make sure you don't point the speaker that way because there's houses over there. We don't <laughs> want to disturb the neighbors. So meanwhile, there's, there's 500, there's 500, 500 nice motorcycles. Yeah. Go, and I mean, and every one of them, they're proud how loud they are. And they're all... So your greeting was very warm, too. You were, yeah. you were welcomed with open arms. Nice to see all of you. And of course, <laughs> no, nobody went away without a WJFK coffee mug. So okay. everyone was happy. Okay. So, so he calls me and you know, I say, how's it going? He, he says, best appearance ever. Right. There's 500, always are. 500 motorcycles here making as much noise as they can. They're mad about my clothes in play. Unbelievable. And seriously, I mean, not only are they just running, but every time someone comes or goes, they're all making a scene. They're all yeah. being as loud as they can. Sure. So what I had to do was call them back a couple hours later. I said, Rob, this is no matter how your appearance is going. I want you to know right now, I've parked my car. I'm looking at a, I'm looking at a guy in a gorilla suit and a muscle shirt. It made me feel better because no matter where you are in the showbiz ladder, there's someone to look down to. There you and go. And it's the man in the gorilla suit. Oh, right. my God. How did the jacket look? Did he give away the jacket? It was very, very Oh, the cool. jacket for our show? Yeah, like yeah, an embroidered the... Harley jacket with the Donna Mike logo on it. Fantastic. Like I the think ones it was... that we wear. I think it was, yeah, just like the ones we're wearing right now. Right, exactly. <laughs> in the 80 degree weather. <laughs> and the horror of horrors. Yes. Thank goodness I wasn't involved in this on Sunday night. Right. That's when uh, oh the, the power... Known as uh, our wives got together. Uh oh. And I just I feel pity 
for anybody that was in the D.C. area late Sunday night. I know you think those cicadas are loud. <laughs> right. But if you can imagine... Are they louder than, uh, when your wives get together, is it louder than Harley's? Oh, yeah. And the thing is, it's, this, it's that sound. It's not that cicada sound. It's no. this. Oh, really? Well, I told them not to do that. Well, I told them not to do that. Oh, your husband's an idiot. My husband's an idiot. Your husband's an idiot. Yes, they're idiots. Would you like another drink? Yes. <laughs> do you know that the cicadas, um, there's something that's been ignored about the cicadas? What's that? And it concerns this building. Do you know that they are so powerful that they are tearing this building down? That they are actually... Good, I'm for that. They are actually affecting the structure. Have you seen what I'm talking no. about? No, what are they doing? Out in the door frame where they have actually wedged the door frame open. And, oh, uh, well, that, that piece of tin. And that's uh, that's why they're hanging in there. About to fall off anyway. They're, no, they're crawling yeah. into the building. They're going to kill us all, and you guys are going to mock me, and uh, I'm telling the truth. Yeah. They will kill us all, <laughs> and they're going to do it before they have to leave this earth. Well, let them start with our wives, then. <laughs> Buzz, I'll leave your wife out of it, but okay. let them... Let them start. My wife, Rob's wife, and Frida was so happy when I talked to her on Sunday night. Right, and if, why wouldn't she be happy? Sure. She was like, she was like, she shot out of a cannon. <laughs> she calls me. She goes, Hi, "It's about ten thirty. She goes, "Hi, what are you doing?" I said, um, "I'm watching uh, whatever it was. I was watching basketball, whatever it was." She, I said, "What are you doing?" She said, "I had the greatest time." Carrie and I went out to dinner, and then we went to the movie. We went to Super Size. Do you know what Super Size means about? I'm like. I'm aware of the concept. It was so great. And then we went and we talked and we talked and we talked and we had drinks afterwards with people and we talked and we talked and it's everything that I, everything I love. I wish you could be more like that. It more was, like Carrie. Uh, 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 more, li more like Carrie. Yeah. I wish she could be a woman. And I got the same thing when, when Carrie got home, but even more so, because, you know, Carrie, of course, would be that excited to go to a pyramid scheme at a, at a hotel ballroom. She just wants away <laughs> from the kids. Right. And she came home and it was, you two are both, and you two both appear to be thrilled about that. I am. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I'm glad she's happy. Mm -hmm. Right. Just keep it to yourself. Yeah. You just don't need to hear about it. Exactly. Keep it to, it's like with work. I'm happy that she's happy about work. Right. Yeah. Don't tell me all the time how freaking happy you are. And Rob, just out of curiosity, we've been talking about Don and his bald spike. Can yeah. I see the top of your head again? Yeah. You know, sadly, it did get a lot of sun at that appearance. You said it got burned, and, and the, oh. hold on, let me see. Now, now, is that not growing? Pulsing red. It's that is that is bigger. Hey Baldy, now you just got you just got a cut. Just got a cut. Hey Baldy, <laughs> hey Baldy, what you looking at? I hat. just wanted to see it because I mean it looks I thinner. I'm, I'm an ass. Get myself a hat, <laughs> bandana. I am an ass. Do you think seriously if you grew your hair out, yes. that, that it would be, that, or is it? See, I'm just curious about this. I think if I grew my hair out, you wouldn't tell. You wouldn't be able to tell there's any thinning up top. And listen, you know we should we should get off his uh, back, pun intended, about his hair because tomorrow on the show, mm. all of his other body hair is going. Yeah. Tomorrow, Rob is having the live just my back and neck, the back and neck hair lasering procedure live yeah. on the show. How low does your uh, back hair go? Just to my to my middle toe. <laughs> <laughs> No, they said they said they can go as low. <laughs> how low can you go? Uh -huh. They said they can go as low as I want, and I said, "Well, how about like, you know, just through the uh, the gluteal cleft?" And they said that'll be fine, just till the Where crack of an elastic the crack band. Of dawn. Was the word was the word word of Brazilian use? No, 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 that would be for our next promotion. <laughs> but they're gonna they're gonna clean up my entire back. The most fun I think you'll have will be at the uh, first part of the procedure, which is the shaving and the numbing. <laughs> you know, when you'll I hear, hear it, all, lasers, you'll hear it all live on the air. Tomorrow. They do that little that 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 that. Yeah, do they out. zap every individual hair? I don't know. I probably should look into this. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. What they told Give me the check, is that ladies and gentlemen. They, that's right. That's so right. <laughs> he would have had it done. In, he would have had it done at Harley in a gorilla suit if he could right. have. If, if the check is green. Sure. But what they do is the laser actually it's painless because it blows ice cold air on your back the whole time that oh. it's happening. Oh, okay. so they like numb you and then they do. So they say it feels like you're eating a York peppermint patty. Hey, would you, huh. Listen, I'm not being a homo. Would you take your shirt off for a second? Can we just right, see how see where your back is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my God. It's a good thing it's a four-hour show. And, and you're going to be hair-free on, on your back after. Uh, yeah, up to the uh, shoulders, and they're going to do the sides of my, the back. I mean, and you're seriously too. looking forward to this. You don't like your hair. Well, you right? know what? I wouldn't normally care, but remember, we both got waxed a couple of years yep, ago, yep, and that lasted yep. for me yeah. like about 15 hours. Right. Right, but right. the time that my back was hairless, 
it felt good, and I could dry off a lot quicker after a shower. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't hold the water. I mean, that's, you know, over, a, over a year, I'll save a few hours. I am not kidding that Rob has a lot of freaking hair on yeah. his he's back. He's got it mm-hmm. kind of where I have it. I don't have it nearly as much as he has, but he's got it where I have it, which is on your flank. Yeah, That's mm-hmm. where it is. The flank. The My meaty <laughs> flank. Parted on the left. Meaty, line. drooping flank. So tomorrow, we finally get on this whole extreme <laughs> makeover <laughs> thing, and right. it's our first elective surgery yeah. on the air with right. Rob on the air. And can I just say that, that this is, and you, you say our first, mm-hmm. and I would venture to say that with all of our ages that yes. uh, you can probably look forward to uh, procedures uh, done on this show for the next uh, three years or so. Because you know what? I'm certainly not averse to uh, somewhere down the line getting something done. I know you probably wouldn't. You're, you're Mr. All Natural, but uh, you know, I've colored my beer with beer with Just for Men. And uh, you know, and I, I lift would not be out of the and question. Firing surgery. I know Buzz. Mm-hmm. Buzz likes to keep youthful, and, and, and you know, you're not averse to a procedure sure, once in a while. Bring in the plastic surgery. Absolutely. We all have small pieces of luggage that prevent us from looking our best. Yes. We do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm totally, you know what? The swan did it for me. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. Makeovers for everyone. Cheek look, implants. Look, look, look what they did, and look how much prettier we are than those women on that show. <laughs> That's true. Look where they start. Our starting line is Bingo. way up front. Yeah. Bingo. All right, so what do you want? If you really well, no, I don't, I don't, not right now. <laughs> I don't, think, yeah. Yeah. I don't well, think I'm ready for it. If you take, take this back, because I'd never get anything done. But if you could get anything done, if you look at your, if you look at your parents, what would you, what would you do? Let me look at myself for just a moment. All right, all right, take a look. John, right, uh, <laughs> Donna's looking into a CD. Well, you can see yourself. Yes, yeah. you're looking into a yes, CD. As a mirror. What a, what a change. Mm. Mm. I know what I wouldn't have done because I've already found out about that. Mm. Well, number one would be I'd get my nose straightened, but it's too involved. Mm. What if you just made the rest of your face crooked? One word comes to mind. What? Flawless. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Flawless. Mm-hmm. I knew that was coming. Flawless. You know, would you would you go to Michelangelo and say, hey, you missed a spot on the ceiling? No. I don't think so. No. I don't think so. No. Boy. Mm. Are you good looking? <laughs> you look like you just had a weekend without your wife. <laughs> oh, why, yes, I did. You look very happy. That'll be ending tonight when I get home. <laughs> why is that? She, why, and he, He's you, having a conversation with himself looking yeah, in the mirror. Had, had the CD. <laughs> the CD. Hey, how you doing, handsome? I'm doing great. Who's your bald friend? <laughs> oh. <laughs> say, say hi to Rob. <laughs> then I turn around to see these so right, I can right. see them. Gold no, but I think, you, you know, who knows down the road? And right now, all the account executives in the back yeah. room are, like, rubbing their That's hands. It's like when you start talking sure. about how you'd like to go on a cruise with our listeners sometime. Mm-hmm. And they all get going on that one, too. That was, I don't know, what I was thinking then, Don, and uh, that was uh, that was silly talk. Okay. One word, <laughs> <Veen Dom. laughs> we, got, we got a break. Oh, Robert Mailman is on the line. Hey, yeah, all right. I know that he'll Hot think I'm, I know he'll think I'm sliding him, but I just tell him just a few seconds. That's right. Um, Hello, fellas. Hey, what's happening, Robbie? Hi, Robert. Just can identify with a Don there. I just came back from a black bike week down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Uh-huh. Or like a, or as I like to call it, Black Bitch Bike Week. Black Bitch Bike Week? Yeah. Got pictures and video. You got nice women down there? Oh, my goodness. And the cars. Now, you know I'm 38 years old myself, and I like to trick out trucks. I got the Denali, too. Uh-huh. Right. These young kids, man, they made me feel like F, man. Anybody call you bald, Robert? Anybody say, hey, baldy? No, hey, hey, old man, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was wild, but I got pictures of a... Um, hey Robert, you got any the stuff? I can't even tell you what I saw. You got any friends in Wisconsin? Uh, yeah, but uh, they're locked up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they just had me going through Wisconsin and got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robert, we we got a break. Um, listen, hold on a sec. Have you, have you had a chance to meet Beth Ann? Yeah, I do need to talk to her so when I come in the building, she won't run away. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> your book. Hold idea. on. Hold on a second here. Robert's on his game today. If he's got pictures and tapes, he can come down. Absolutely. I'd like to see. Hello? Hi there. Hey. Hi, B.A. There's a, there's a very angry black man on line number two. You should talk to him. Okay. Okay? I'll do that now. Mm-hmm. You ever talked to a black person before? Yes, Don. I have talked to a black person before. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure. This is working great. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's your first day. I'm just making sure. He's already settled right in. Okay. So he's on the line. Once again, a black man. Robert Mailman is his name. Robert. Robert. I'm on it right now. Don't ever call him by his real name. Which is? <laughs> oh, no. If we said it, we get in trouble. <laughs> He'll get mad. We'll tell you off the air. Okay. Let me just say, though, it's the same initials as you, yeah. B.A. Right. <laughs> oh, now you get, you've gotten him mad already. Bye. <laughs> okay, so, bye. You know what? I like the brevity on the air. I love that. There you go. Bing, bing, bing. I'd like to teach that to my wife. This is getting...
ghetto licious. Brevity. Brevity. Um, uh, we're up on a break this weekend. Yes. We sent uh, Joe Ardinger, world's oldest phone screener, uh, out on a uh, mission. You remember back in 1987? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you don't. Joe does. When the cicadas were first here? I'm not sure he does. 17 years ago? Right. Remember we played this tape for you last week? Really, from 1987, Joe got loaded and went out in his yard in the middle of the night to tape the cicadas. Mm -hmm. 3.30 a.m. Check. One, two, three. This is Ardinger. And we're foraging out into my front lawn at this very minute. It's about 3.20 on Saturday, a uh, Sunday morning. And that was 17 years ago. Yes, it was. We asked him over the weekend to recreate the same magic. Mm -hmm. Could he succeed? Let's hear just a little bit of it. Micah, check it, check it, check it. Ooh, that's sweet. Joe? Yeah, I have to turn this up as much as I can. Same recorder. He's wasted. Mm. I don't know if you're catching that, but that is the background sound. Hold on, now you tell me if you can tell the difference. This is Joe 17 years ago. Check. One, two, three. This is Ardinger. <laughs> and here he is now. Of uh, our sister station, WCXS. And let me back off the microphone a little bit. Maybe I'll... Level. Yeah. He is ageless. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. He's evergreen, isn't he? Really? He is, is ageless. Um, Joe Evergreen Ardinger. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, our sister station. <laughs> Obviously, wow. He's drunk. He's supposed to be out there with the cicadas doing his. Uh, Much more plugged in to the way radio works, so Our yeah. sister station. Mm -hmm. 17 years. We'll hear Joe's tape when we come right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Chapter 1 on Terrorism. Oh, we heard that one. Let's hear our man on education. Uh -huh. Education. Good. Chapter 2 on Education. Education. The public education system in America is one of the most important foundations of our democracy. After all, it is where children from all over uh, America learn to be responsible citizens and learn to have the skills necessary to take advantage of our fantastic opportunistic society. <laughs> I love the idea of a, uh, a school in which people come to get educated and stay in the state in which they're educated. <laughs> we'll make America where we want it to be. A literate country and a hopeful a country. What? Hopeful. <laughs> what was that, George? In our state of Texas, I worked with the legislature, both Republicans and Democrats, to pass a law that said if you come in the top 10% of your high school class, yeah. you're automatically admitted to one of our one of our higher institutions, of higher institutions of learning, <laughs> college. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we identify problem readers early and give them help they need early. Well, we test each year to make sure students are learning, and we train teachers in methods that work. In reading, that method includes phonemic awareness and phonics. No new theory has ever improved on it. George, you want to be uh, blunt about what has taken place? Sometimes when you don't measure, you just shuffle kids through. Then you wake up at the high school level and find out that the liter literacy level of our children are falling. <laughs> you can call Don and Mike anytime from anywhere in America. 877-365-3636. They're ready to believe. All real. We're concerned about AIDS inside our White House. Make no mistake about it. Okay. Obey them, or they will choke you out. Yeah. Don and Mike. Um, right, support our president. Uh, hold off on that Joe thing, because we have a clown, clown interview coming up here. Oh, cloud, I want to hit the cloud. I want to hit the, the uh, not, not cloud, clown. I know. A cloud? A cloud. I just wanted to hear you say that. A cloud? <laughs> <laughs> I watched a good Columbo over the weekend. Did you really? Dude, on Bravo, sometimes you get a Columbo. Right. 
circa 1970 mm -hmm. with the woman who was um, who was the girl that was in Play Misty for me? The lady that was Jessica crazy? Walter. Yeah, Jessica Walter. Oh, was, Jessica Walter, wonderful mm -hmm. actress. She's had her on the show. Mm -hmm. She was on the uh, on the Columbo show mm -hmm. on on Bravo. Uh, Bravo, you get three things on on Bravo. You either get Columbo mm -hmm. or you get Queer. Right. The, the queers are all over that with the, with the queer eye. Mm -hmm. Right. Or you get. The West Wing. Right. That's all you get on Bravo. And don't you get inside the actor's studio, too? That's only once a week. But, I mean, generally speaking, if you turned on Bravo right now... It would James be, Lipton! It would either be Queer, or it would be The West Wing, or it would be the other show. That's all they run. Three right. shows. Yep. And on. Van Dyke alert. Tonight on Trio, Jerry Van Dyke's My Mother the Car. If you haven't caught it before, this is your oh. chance. Is there any doubt thank why you. this is being run on Canadian television? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Three episodes, like, I I've always admired the Canadian sense of humor. Uh -huh. Like you'll watch it. Some of our greatest comedians have come from Canada. <laughs> Mike, I want you to sit down. Hold on, you're sitting down. I want you to really relax. Uh -huh. Hold on, I don't want you to relax. I want you to get ready for a surprise. Uh -huh. I'm going to say something well, now. Well, should I change my... I'm in a very relaxed position. It's going to rock your world. You might want to just uncross your feet. Mike Dunn, Mel Carmerson, has resigned as our boss. Oh, no. Where did you hear that? It's not true. I'm making it up, Buzz. Oh, I'm making oh, it up. Oh, my it's God. God. That's right. It's just a joke. It's a hideous joke. <laughs> yes. No, this is, the, uh, this is the story. This will be on Entertainment Tonight. This will be on right. Extra Tonight. Yes. Yeah, uh, the guy who's been our boss for 13 years, Mel Carmerson, the guy that uh, invented Infinity Broadcasting, mm -hmm. he's been pushed out the door by... The very old Sumner Redstone. Now, I don't know why Mel just didn't take... Uh, we had a strategy. When we worked against Harden and Weaver, mm -hmm. these guys that were on in the morning, right. and Mike and I did the morning show, That's what it and, and we could, for years, we could never beat them. We were always number two in the morning. Always. They, they had a hold on the market of Washington, D.C. that was just uh, unbeatable. And our thought was we'd just hide outside WMAL where they worked, and when they kept walked out of the door at 10 o'clock, we'd just go, Boo! <laughs> they, they got, Mel should have done that with this, with this guy it's Sumner. Mel, no. Don, I was reading about what Mel got, and uh, I don't think Mel's doing very badly. No, well, I, th I think Mike did. Re frankly, he's underpaid. <laughs> For all that he's done, he's underpaid. It, I don't think so. It is a. a oh, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not turning tail now. It is a weird, weird day at Infinity Broadcasting. Very, the, very weird. There are a lot of people that are connected with this company that have been. Um, under Mel for a long, long time, and, and know him personally, and uh, he's he's been Infinity Broadcasting, so a lot of people are uptight. Today. And even though the guy uh, has been not from my lips, not from your lips, from other lips, we've heard um, hard to work with. Yeah, he's, uh, been a, he's very outspoken, a hard manager, hard mm -hmm. hard to get a word in edgewise. Not a great listener. Mm -hmm. Having said all of that, mm -hmm. really, what a dynamic guy! Yeah. What a dynamic freaking guy! And Innovative. This, this company will not be the same. Without Mel around, uh, and the news is that, of course, because Mel Karm is, a, is such a smart guy mm -hmm. and is so well respected by Wall Street and by businessmen, the job that 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 he will probably get next will be the head of the business corporation, Michael Eisner's job. Oh. Now, now, if there was ever two things that don't go well, what did Simon say? It's like uh, it's like chocolate. It's like onions and chocolate ice cream. Mm -hmm. Right. This is Mel and Disney. This I, I can't. I, I told Mike before the show. If it happens, I, he would turn Disney around. Yeah. I have no idea. Oh, no idea would. how, but I know he would do it. No doubt. He would go in and do it the Mel way. And, and now here's the problem that a lot of people in this company have. There's a certain way of doing things, the, the Infinity way, which is also known as the Mel way, mm -hmm. which means. You do it cheap, you do it fast, and if you don't get it right, guess what? Your ass is out of here. Right. And, uh, and now, I, to, to me, those are the, the best and the, and the toughest situations to do a radio show or work in radio under, where there's this incredible pressure. Do whatever you want. You have creative freedom, programming-wise and sales-wise. But keep the ratings up, and that was our, that was yeah. our director. Here's right. the only thing. You can do whatever you want. Have a great time. The moment that you stink, you're mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. You're gone. And even when you think you're doing great, you call in and talk to Mel and his cufflinks. And it's always the bottom line. I mean, that's really what it's always been about. It's the bottom line. I don't see how it... This is what people are concerned about. I think Buzz said to me before the show that the, the, the rumor was that Infinity was going to be like clear channel light, which I means, heard that. Which means, you know, I guess cheaper. How could it get any cheaper <laughs> than when... And, and I say that yeah. with a lot of love. How could it get any cheaper than when Mel ran it? Yeah, exactly. How could it possibly get any cheaper? When Mike and I would sit down at a meeting and say... There are no billboards. When we first started working here, there are no billboards. He said, 
We could have some billboards if we took some of your salary back. <laughs> if, if you really, if you, because this is how the guy would work us. Sure. If you really think you need advertising, right? Well, then yeah, I guess you're not as good as we thought. Uh, we could take some money back and buy you some billboards. We could you get think? you. And the same thing with syndication. We first started uh, to syndicate, and uh, we were we were complaining about the fact that we wanted more markets. Uh -huh. And he said, "Why do you want them? What is that for?" We said, "Well, we'd like to make more money." He said, "I'm not stopping you." I'm not stopping you. You know, meanwhile, what we wanted to say to the guy was, you own 800 stations. You got us on like 20 of them. Uh -huh. But every time, the only answer was, what haven't I done for you? Exactly. Right. What haven't I done for you? And it was a meeting a long, long time ago, right before he became king of uh, CBS. Right. And uh, then after that, we never saw him again. <laughs> But I guess the guys here, you know, our leaders here have certainly had meetings with Mel. Oh, yes. God, I had a come-to-Jesus uh, message on a machine from Alan Line once. Mm -hmm. You know, you would have thought that Mel got hit by a bus. Wow. I mean, it was, he was saying this is a, a tough day, personally, and professionally. Alan, I guess, unaware of the fact that he's walking away with stock options uh, in the neighborhood of $400 million. No, here's, see, no one feels bad for Mr. Carmazone no, no, for what he's fine. walking away with. Right. What they're all afraid of is that they're used to doing things his way. Yes. Now someone else, you know, meet the new boss, same as the old boss. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a new guy coming in. Yeah. And, you know, from what I'm reading, the new guy is from MTV. Right. So there you go, Dad. That's good, because I'll tell you, MTV's not screwed things up too much. No, they did fine with the Super Bowl. MTV, no, I'm not even talking about that, Buzz. I'm just talking no. about when you want to see a good music video, uh -huh. man, you go to MTV. Hey, I like the real world. Because that's all you have on MTV, or music video anyway. So Mel's gone. Uh, I don't know. That, that's it. Nobody and, uh, does. And uh, we could call Alan to get his feelings. I think we should. I think we should see how he's... He's feeling, because he, as you indicated to me, it's kind of a day of mourning for him. Mm -hmm. Right. wonder if he's worried about being canned now. I think, you know, there's an awful, awful lot of layers before that would happen. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but there's certainly no reason you can't torture him. He is pretty dumb. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. If the new guy gets him in the room. Right. You know, Alan's going to have... Alan's only defense in the, in the past is... Alan? Alan? Yes. Hey, it's Don and Mike. Hi, Alan. Hey, guys. Uh, hang on a sec. Hey, i got to call you back. His only defense in the past has always been why well, I was I'm one of Mel's original guys. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Like when someone would say, Alan, you're dumb. He would, But I was one of Mel's original guys. Yes, that's it. Well, let's, let's tap in and, and see how he's feeling. Alan, Alan. I, how are you doing today? Day of mourning for you today? Well, we're reading this thing about Mel and uh, and going to Disney, maybe. About Mel, Mel Carmison, the great uh, guy that yeah. founded Infinity Broadcasting. Will you be renting Fantasia this weekend? <laughs> Here I come, Bambi. <laughs> very, uh, very surprising and very sad. Very surprising. You've been, uh, you've been part of this uh, Mel thing from the beginning. Yeah, I wouldn't say the beginning, but it seems like quite a long time. And uh, do you still have the shrine to him? Uh, yeah, I, I guess some would call it a shrine. Yeah. Well, have I you, would. Have you given some thought, uh, you know, considering a career as an Imagineer? I'll tell you, I don't know. I hope I don't have to consider a career doing anything else. But uh, Now, you're the, the head honcho here at our radio station, uh, WJFK in Washington. Have you had any high-level discussions with others that are him? affected by this? Please. Uh, it's like asking Rob. Yeah, it's like I, asking no, no, not, not, not Mel. A lot of phone calls today. Not, not Mel, just uh, people <laughs> higher up in the chain. A lot yeah. of calls. As far as not, 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 not the main guy. I don't think anybody important. Have you, Alan? Uh, we've, I've had discussions today. Let's leave it at that. Ooh. See, no one's called him. <laughs> He's like the last person on the list, really. Yeah, we, but Mike, if you check your CBS account, yes. everybody got an email from Sumner Redstone today. Right, right. Everybody got the thing saying, you know, at the very end, what, what did it say about uh, Mel? Said, we wish him well. Right. It was, it was like... Yeah, it, it basically said we wish him well. It was, it was the biggest get out of here letter I've ever read. Mm -hmm. you know, Mel's a great guy. He's an interview. Oh, yes, we wish you well. Goodbye. Please say hello to Les Moonves. And Christ, if that guy's the boss, then we're in trouble. Yeah, we're in big trouble. Because Les Moonves doesn't like us. Well, that's no. the way we understand it. Oh, well, at least that's what Patty Heaton has said. That's right. Yeah. Aye, aye, aye. Well, so, I guess we're all in trouble because the, the first words are, nothing's changing. Oh, you yeah. know that's yeah. bad when that happens. You know, you know it's bad news when you hear that. That's always, that's, that's like a guarantee. Mm-hmm. Well, um, Alan, there you go. There you well, go. Yeah, I'm sad. There you go. Uh, of course you are. You're like you're like a child who's being uh, you. You were nursed at, at mother's breast all these years, and now you're being told you got to go on the bottle. You got to go on the formula. I know. You can't. You can't be up there. 
You think he's going to uh, lay low, or you he think he's going to lay? He can't be laying your head <laughs> in Bell's lap as he strokes your hair, and, and, you, and you get the necessary fluid that you need to live as you're, as you're nursing. I'll miss that. Yeah, I know you are. I know you. Do you think he's going to lay low, or do you think he's going to go somewhere else? Uh, I can't see him laying low for long. Okay. That's uh, that's sort of not his style, right? Well, when you don't speak to him, please tell him that we said goodbye. Okay, I will. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Right, guys. Bye, Alan. Good job. There you go. Bye. So sorry. There he is. Wait, he just flipped out. He hit a lot of people behind he's not even a, He doesn't even want to be funny today. A broken no. man. And that's why he's funny. Because yeah. he doesn't want to be funny. That's absolutely right. But I like you with his, Mel stroking his hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alan nursed. Hush, little baby, don't you cry. But the billing for me, it's, it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. Ah! Everything's going to be fine. Fine. Yes. But what but, haven't I done for you? But what happens, what happens if they push you up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I like doing this to Les Moonves. <laughs> Sumner Redstone. <laughs> I don't even think there's milk that would come out. <laughs> well, it's a day of turmoil here at the company. Yes. Sea rise. So, yeah, for all you people that were calling us a couple of hours ago, yes, we're aware of it. We, we became aware of it very early on. We're aware of it. Well, we wish uh, Mel well. He's a, he's a really good guy, and he's helped us out quite a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you've heard this story. Uh, if you watch the Larry David show, the, the Curb Your Enthusiasm show, right. I know it's in reruns now. They had a couple that were on last night. Do you remember the one where Larry David goes to the, to the Dodgers game? Which is not right up hand. Yeah. From last year. What he, he hired a, a hooker so he could ride in the carpool lane. Okay. All right. Anyway, <laughs> there's, there's a guy in Los Angeles who got arrested for killing a 16-year-old. A 16-year-old mm. girl in a gang murder case. Okay. They arrest this guy. They get the guy in jail. And the guy's saying, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. They say, like, yeah, right. Come on. You're a gangbanger. He says, wait a minute. I was at Dodger Stadium when this girl was killed. And I say, sure you were. He said, I was there and they're taping the Larry David show, Curb Your Enthusiasm. They're doing some scenes. So the lawyer says, let's call HBO and let's get a copy of this goddamn Curb Your Enthusiasm show. Wow. The judge watches it. They all think he's lying. They all think he's full of crap. They go through the videotape and guess who they find in the crowd? He's there? He's there. Wow. He's... He's there, and he's out, thanks to Larry David. That is very cool. Wow. Thanks to Larry David. What are the odds? That, normally, it works the other way. Like, yeah, uh, right. I'm sure you remember last summer where they had, uh, I think it was the Cincinnati Reds had some deal where it was like Kiss Cam, mm -hmm. where if you want to kiss your girlfriend, they put you on the screen, mm -hmm. and everybody was looking at it. It was some guy that had, like, warrants out for his arrest. And they got him, right? And they got him. Anyway, this worked Justice worked out. was served on both uh, accounts. Worked out for this guy. Oh, and did you already put those George Bush tapes away? I can get you. I can get Would you there. please? Yes, sir. Because I thought you might like to know that in President Bush's perfect world, yes, he would have Saddam's head stuffed, mounted and hanging over his fireplace. It's a quote. Now, that's... That's okay. You know, it's a guy. It's a little <laughs> weird. I'm all right with that, though. It's, uh -huh. it's you know, he wants. No, I'm not okay with that at all. He wants a prize. He caught that's the guy. gross. Yeah. He wants. But wait, there's more. Yeah, I know he's the horrible dictator and all, but that's that's hinky. Do you remember when uh, our guys caught Saddam Hussein? Yeah, in they found him in the rat hole. In that yeah. hole. In the spider hole. Yes. You know he had a gun. Right. You know that Saddam had a gun. Mm -hmm. You know where that gun is now? Where? It's in the White House. <laughs> and Bush has it. Oh, God. So he doesn't have his head mounted. Oh, my God. What, is this stuff just coming out now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is going to help. Uh, this is really going to help. Uh -huh. He really likes showing it off. He's real proud of it. Saddam's gun. Oh. But what he really wants is his head mounted on the wall. Just can't do that, though. No. We want to promote families in America. <laughs> families is where our nation finds hope. Where wings take dreams. What? I would have my Secretary of Treasury be in touch with the financial centers, not only here, but at home. I don't think we need to be subliminal about the differences between our views on prescription drugs. What? Well, I've been standing up to big Hollywood, big trial lawyers. Um, what was the question? It was about emergencies, wasn't it? 
<laughs> anyway, there, there he is. He's uh, he's he's got the gun. Standing up, big Hollywood. You know, I got a, a ton of stuff. We got a we got a break. Remind me tomorrow or, or later today. I just I got to tell you about Jerry Seinfeld's garage. Mm. That you know, there's a part of Jerry Seinfeld that everybody loves because. Who doesn't love the TV show, and right. he's got everything, and he's a great guy, and he's funny, and he likes Superman. And then you realize all the money that the mother-father has. Well, also, there's the ego side of Seinfeld, which we've always hated. And mm. I've, I've got stuff here about his, about his garage that he built in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. uh, don't have time for it uh, now. Uh, but, Mike, I'll tell you, he spent eight hundred, no, almost $900,000 on this garage in New York, a, a gigantic building. Can you guess how many cars Jerry Seinfeld has? In, how many cars does in, he have? In his custom garage. How many total? Five. Five cars. Hmm. Five, a a $900,000 garage for five a, cars? In a gigantic building. Now, if you want to see this, Go to smokinggun.com. They have the archive. They have the plans of, of, of this building. Right. Um, the garage only holds five cars. Now, this is a big building. I was going to think, you know, for it, for somebody to be big, $900,000 in Manhattan is not that much money. Mm, well, hold on a second. Uh, it has three cars on, on the ground floor and two cars on the floor upstairs. They have uh, those uh, epoxy, uh, those, uh, those, those things on the wall that look like race car garages, you know, where it's uh, okay. almost like a Johnny Rockets look where it's white and then it's black. It's very expensive, All right. like yeah. down in, in, in Indianapolis. Right. Uh, there's uh, cabinetry. Uh, this so it's all basically just a garage where he can have people work on his cars. Everything is made out of steel just like in NASCAR, mm -hmm. like in IndyCar racing. Uh, separate industrial uh, elevators for his cars and for sure. his machines. And it's all done by touch panels on the wall. Yeah, every oh, really? elevator, the human elevator. And, and even though, excuse me, I'm Jerry <laughs> Seinfeld and I love my oh. automobile. Oh. Oh. Even though he's got all of that. He still has a bachelor pad built into the same, in, into the same building. Ah, oh, really? For when he needs to get away from his beautiful wife and his, and his screaming baby. A kitchen, a bathroom, pool table, and a gigantic wall-sized plasma TV built into the wall. I'm Jerry Seinfeld. Now, the smoking gun is where you want to go to see this, because this will really make you... I mean, we all know the guy's got more money than Jesus, and we all like the show. Right. And generally speaking, I don't think he flaunts it a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we all know that he's rich, and I guess people are okay. Well, he that. doesn't flaunt it, but didn't he tear down uh, the, the house that he bought? Didn't he tear down, like, a brand new mansion to build a... Mm -hmm. Like double the size. Yeah, he, he does stuff like this all the time. But uh, Buzz, can you go to real fast here? One minute, can you go to smokinggun.com? dot com? I believe so. Yeah. If you go to the archives, you can uh, just click on uh, Jerry Seinfeld, and you'll see this garage, and it will make you sick. It'll make you sick. It's like when you look at friends and you... And for, you for just five cars. Yeah. When you wonder, where do these people in New York get this big type apartment? It's impossible. Right. Well, the truth is there are places like that. This is a gigantic warehouse mm -hmm. that he bought right. to turn into his own private garage. Not to be confused with the other building that he bought for his apartment and... My little apartment right next door. And for his, for his place. Anyway, go to Smoking Gun. It'll, it'll drive you freaking crazy. That's all I have. That's it. I'm, oh, hold on. And Pat no. Benatar has AIDS. Um, no. What? Better hope not. I love teasing. <laughs> She's doing an ad for hearing AIDS. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Ah, okay. Hearing right. AIDS. Hearing yes, AIDS. Yes, yes, because all the, the years of rocking and rolling have taken their toll on Pat's. Right, right, and that's all she's got. Oh, and look, mm -hmm. Buzz is on Smoking Gun. Mike, there's yeah. a picture right there of... Uh, of Jerry Seinfeld's garage. Take a look. I was looking at this thing over the weekend. The construction. There. Take a look at that thing. He also just built a baseball field on his on that property, that mansion property that you just mentioned. Of course, because he loves baseball so much. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's I want to play baseball. It's, it's okay to have a lot of money. It's it's okay to build that stuff. Just and I guess he tries to hide it, but the smoking gun just finds it, <laughs> so that you would look at it. And it just it makes you more mad. Well, he's got it, you know, and he's just trying to figure out how to spend it, and it makes me sick. Well, look, I don't know why, but it does. Look at all the floor plans on smoking gun, and look at it's it, Buzz. It's still loading page after page, right? Yes. Oh, there's tons of stuff, including pictures of the construction process for the kitchen and the bathroom. Wow. wow. It's sickening. If you get a chance, I sat at it when I was drinking alone over the weekend. <laughs> I sat at the computer, looked at it, and just. Were you, were you, you were thinking, man, why couldn't I? Just cursed. I just, I just cursed at it. I'm, I'm looking at the guy across the street from me, picking out some lint out of.
out of his belly button. <laughs> Saturday afternoon, about one thirty on the computer, I'm looking at this Jerry Seinfeld garage, and I'm going nuts. Uh, Buzz, are you excited that David Letterman's car won the Indianapolis 500? I'm extremely excited. I, that's unbelievable in the first time. The Ray Hall team, right? right. right. The Letterman-Ray Hall team. I saw, Ray him Hall Letterman. On, I saw him on TV, and if ever, if ever a guy looks out of place... And Letterman is a, a sports fan. Yeah. But he's kind of a nerd, Nick. <laughs> they were interviewing him during the race. Now, it was pretty great because at one point you had NASCAR on and you had the Indy 500 on, both at the same time. Wow. And I was going back and forth, and at the Indy race... They said, we're going to talk to David Letterman, and he was down in the pits uh, while his guy was winning. There was still about an hour left in the race, and it was serious Letterman, and yeah. he was all full of adrenaline. He said, there's nothing better than racing in Indiana when you hear Jim Neighbors say, welcome back to Indiana. <laughs> and then he said something that I totally didn't understand, something about, it's all very vertical. It's, we're feeling vertical today. Don't you see this is happening? It's vertical today. Hmm. And the announcer didn't even follow up on it. <laughs> anybody? Can anybody explain what he means by that? Mm -hmm. Is it a racing term? I, I, have, I have no idea. All I know is I, I turned on the NASCAR, and Mike, your guy. Now, you like Jimmy Johnson, right? Jimmy Johnson's my guy. The 48 car? Yeah, absolutely. The exactly the moment that he won this race. Hmm. This guy's got some cojones. Right. You wouldn't believe. Jimmy Johnson. The coming around three wide. I don't know which turn it is. Like, it matters. They're all left turns. Right. But they're coming around one of these left turns three wide, and there's really only room for two cars. Mm. And three cars are coming around. And this guy, Jimmy Johnson, does one of these things. I know people have done this on the highway before. <laughs> and it's one of these... To you? <laughs> well, no. I've done it. Ah, okay. I mean, I've... What happened? I... Well, there are two cars in front of him. Right. And what he does is he stays on the exact same line. And if he stays exactly where he is, mm -hmm. if these other guys move a little bit, he's going to break right through and it's going to be... Right. Because he, because it's on a bank right. track, right. he's going from the top to the bottom. What he's doing is, in essence, he's saying, I'm going to cut right down this road right here, right down this middle splotch of the track. Mm -hmm. And if these guys are so stupid that they don't move out of the way, we're all going to die. Right. I mean, it was a very ballsy move, right? but it's a move that I know people have made. If you're in the left-hand lane on a four-lane highway and, and you want to get over to the right-hand lane, there's, a, there's an exit. Yeah. Sure. Have you ever done this move where there's really no room, but you just kind of pull your car over, and, but except by doing it one lane at a time, this guy, Jimmy Johnson, did boom, <laughs> boom, boom. And, I, and they got out of the way? I. They got out of the way. He pushed his way through. It, you know, I hate to sound like a neck. It was one of the greatest NASCAR moments. Really? I've ever seen. It was some smooth freaking driving. I mean, that guy's got some stone. <laughs> <laughs> that, and it's not like he's waving to the other guys, you know, going 20 miles an hour. Who did he beat? Who did he, beat? he beat Junior, right, didn't he? Oh, Junior got uh, killed. Junior was nothing in this race. you got to watch your terminology when you're talking about NASCAR. Oh, yeah, excuse me, yeah. NASCAR fan. No, he did not do well. Right. Ah. He did not do well. That's he wasn't, he, was, he wasn't. Sadly, Who did Jimmy Johnson beat? Sadly, there? Mike, no one was killed this weekend. No one was killed in so NASCAR. They, so a lot of NASCAR fans were not happy. You a lot of wrecks. You only get that payoff once every three or four years. Mm -hmm. Oh, a lot of wrecks. Mm -hmm. A lot of wrecks. And the best thing about this is there was a wreck. Some guy's engine blew up right towards the end. Mm -hmm. And this guy, Jimmy Johnson, who had just made this great move, uh, had the race won. But they're saying because some guy blew his engine out, they're going to have to do a restart with four laps left. Right. So, like, all the hard work this guy's done, he's done, like, 300 and some laps. It, it, it's like you play a game, and you get all the way to the very end of the game, and you say, we don't care what the score is. We're going to start everybody right here. Right. And everybody starts over even and fair right now. Even? It was a shotgun start, wow. a green flag shotgun start. Guys, pretty incredible. Wow. Guys, it was a move. I don't mean to sound like a neck NASCAR fan, but it was a cool move. It was cool. And I know I've done it before. I know you've done it before. I know we've seen people that have done it I before. do it when I'm here in the studio. Just out on the highway. If, there, if it gets crowded, we, we have guests, so I'll do that. I'll slide right in front of them. Go-karting. Pretty, do it. pretty yeah. great moment. And, oh, and at the Indy 500, uh, also, you would have loved it. Morgan Freeman was there. Mm -hmm. Hi, how are you? Fine. Are you having a good time? He was in the pace car. Welcome to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. He's in the pace car. I'm Morgan Freeman. So you got Letterman there. You've got uh, Morgan Freeman there. 
Uh, Jessica Simpson was there. She's everywhere. And then, and then as I would, I would go between NASCAR and the Indy race. And she's fine. I noticed, <laughs> I noticed at the Indy race that the celebrities, once you got past like Letterman and Jessica Simpson, mm -hmm. nobody's there because at one point they were interviewing Rupert from Survivor. Oh! He was there, but you're overlooking another guy. James Garner was there. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, yeah. I saw him. Uh, also, The Bachelor. That guy. Uh, well, James Garner's into racing since uh, he made years and years ago. He made a racing movie. Right. Yeah. About Indy. About Indy cars. And Indy. What's the guy's name? Uh, the Grand Prix, I think, was yeah, the name I of the movie. That's correct. Yeah. The Bachelor, Jesse Palmer. Uh -huh, right. And incidentally, that, there. that reference that I just made, that movie, mm -hmm. that's for our listeners who are in their 60s. Yes. Right. Who saw it in Cinerama. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Cinerama. <laughs> Right. That is an old. That might be the oldest movie reference that I made legitimately. <laughs> Cinerama. And uh, also there, also there was uh, Kelly Holcomb. Oh, Kelly Holcomb huh. was there? Kelly Holcomb was like the third straight quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. That's very sad. And I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, because it was one of those times during the Indy 5. Was Rudy from Survivor there? <laughs> no, but they, they had some car had crashed. Or... Rudy Bosch was <laughs> Rudy Martsky. Rudy Bosch. Rudy Bosch. Hey, I like the racing. The, the Rudy that made you cry in the Notre Dame movie. <laughs> yeah, Rudy. So the cars are going around and around and they say, well, we got more celebrities in the crowd. Hey, look, it's Rupert, and who knows what the hell this guy's last name is. And, you know, he's just, I just want to say it's great to be here. It's really great to be here. And hey, Jane Pauly. And then they pull out Jane Pauly. And, and then they win the race and they drink the milk. Yeah. <laughs> what they, the hell do they drink milk for? I don't know. What's the reason for that? Same Why reason Alan does. It's, it's, it's very, an, an, very nurturing. It builds strong bones. Yeah, makes, okay. your, makes your teeth strong. Does somebody good. Yeah. You know, we told Alan that for years. Why are you doing this thing with Mr. Carmen? Mm -hmm. Why don't you just get your milk from the dairy? Well, he enjoys that Indy 500, too. He does. <laughs> um, okay, clowns in the news when we come back. Ah. Real clown news from the Clown News Network, including something from the Clown Hall of Fame. Fantastic. Wow. Any chance Bozo's calling? No call back from Larry Harmon. Larry Harmon. Mm. Okay, stand by, everybody. Clowns in the news, and we come right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Just remember what your old pal Bozo always says. Just keep laughing. <laughs> the Don and Mike Show. Rated PG. Pretty good. The Don and Mike Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's ready for some clowns? Found it. Everybody. I want to send this one out. Larry Harvey, Norman's Bozo. Come on, Bill Squire. I used to like me a Billy Squire, something awful. I still like me the Billy Squire. You know why? Why? Because he's like uh, Led Zeppelin Light. You're absolutely right. That's a very good comparison. He is very uh, Robert Plant sound. A little more poppy, though. A little, a little more pop. Clowns in the news. There's a, there's a, there is a clown hall of fame. <laughs> sure. Right there, I'm laughing. I'm sorry. I have been during the break reading all the literature of now, this entire segment, and I am laughing out loud. <laughs> Here's the deal. You know the guy that's Bozo, Larry Harmon? Uh-huh. Well, I, I would say probably out of our entire listening audience, everybody would know Bozo, and very few of them would know that it's a guy named Larry Harmon. I think people over the age of... Forty might know who Larry Harmon really? is. Really? Okay. Might know that Larry Harmon is Bozo. Don't you have a past with him where he has been a pain in the ass to you before? Yeah, back mm -hmm. in Chicago. That's right. Uh, it, don't you think it's a Chicago thing, though, that that, uh, that Larry Harmon was Chicago well known in? Was, was the last place that had a running Bozo show. Right. On yeah. WGN. Um, anyway, there is a clown Hall of Fame, and Larry Harmon, who was, as far as we knew, the original Bozo, yeah. was in there. Well, now, as it turns out, there's a guy who says, hey, hold on a second. I'm Bozo. I'm the first Bozo. Well, no, there's a guy that's saying that for him, right? That's, uh, yeah. Because yeah. the guy that's the original Bozo ain't around yeah. to yeah. say anything. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. He'd be saying, I'm dead. Let me out of here. And we, this other guy is saying that the, the other guy was Bozo. Ah. So now the Clown Hall of Fame has decided... We believe the guy who's friends with the dead guy. And we're taking Larry Harmon off the wall. And putting the other guy up on the wall at the Clown Hall of Fame. Oh as the creator God. of Bozo, 
Who I think it would be safe to say Bozo is the most famous clown in the world. Yeah. Next to Alan Linewand, absolutely. <laughs> Clowns. So, now we tried to get Larry Harmon to come on the show today. Mm -hmm. right. This was Larry Harmon. One time we had him on our show. We asked him to talk like Bozo. Just remember what your old pal Bozo always says. Right. Just... Keep laughing. <laughs> and after that, he said, Is that magic or what? Yeah. And, and after he did that, he said something like, Are you happy now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very much like Krusty the Clown. If you go to Harmon's website, all it has is his biography and how you can license Bozo or Laurel and Hardy. Really? How he makes his money now. Right. right. So here's the mission statement for the International Clown Hall of Fame. International. It's dedicated to, to the preservation and advancement of clown art. <laughs> represented by professional and amateur clowns, pays tribute to outstanding clown performers. Hmm. So what they've done is they've taken Larry Harmon's name off the wall. Well, that's not right. And put the other guy, Pinto Kolvig. Sure. <laughs> Who was the original bozo? They put Pinto Kolvig's picture up on the wall. Let's call Catherine O'Dell, who's the executive director of the Clown Hall of Fame. Mike, we've the International Clown Hall of Fame and Research Center. We've been talking a lot about uh, Wisconsin today. Incorporated. She's in Milwaukee. Uh huh. Yeah, hey there. It's only fitting that the Clown Hall of Fame. Oh, and what is it? who's that guy from ABC hey. News? Hello, uh, Catherine. Yes. Hey, it's the Don and Mike show. How are you? Hi, Catherine. Good. How are you? Hi there, Catherine. First off, congratulations on all you continue to do with the good work for the International Clown Hall of Fame. Thank you. You're very welcome. We're big uh, clown aficionados. We've been uh, we've been uh, on the subject of clowns uh, back and forth for the last couple of weeks, actually. So if you could tell us how it is that you came to kick Larry Harmon out and put P Pinto Colvig in in your clown hall this, of fame. Obviously, we were discussing Bozo would be the most famous clown in in the world, and uh, and this is this is a big controversy in the world of clowning, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm. I'm afraid he's the second most famous clown. You probably wouldn't guess the most famous. He happens to be Ronald McDonald. Oh, that's uh, right, Ronald. Yep, that's a, you're, you're absolutely right about that. Bozo is the second most well-known clown throughout the world, and um, I believe Buck's on the line. Are you on the line, Buck? Yeah, yeah. Oh, is this the guy from ABC News, this Buck Wolf? Hi. Buck Wolf from ABC News, who is also interested in this story. Oh. Huh. Um, he broke the story. Yeah, actually, right. Buck, you did all the uh, you Buck's did all the, the journalism. Buck's on the it. guy that stood up for the dead guy. Uh, now there's so many guys. It's Pinto, right? Pinto was the original bozo. Yeah. And, and Buck is the guy from ABC who went to the cl clown museum on behalf of Pinto ah. to say Larry's not the real bozo. Buck, when I was reading this uh, story, <laughs> I, I was curious as to uh, you, you know this is important to you. Why why is so important this whole clown thing? What's what's the deal? Well, I wrote something once about Bozo. I spoke to the. I spoke on the phone with Larry Harmon. He described himself as the original Bozo, and then when I got through with it, um, I found out that uh, he just wasn't. Uh, you know, he claims. All he's claimed over the years that he brought Bozo to TV and that he created Bozo, and most of those statements just aren't true. He just bought the rights to Bozo from Capitol Records in the 1950s. Very bright guy when it comes to marketing. He sold Bozo shows to cities, local TV stations all over the country. So it would so be Chicago, Los Angeles, New would, York. Would it be like? I mean, I can't think of a parallel, but would it be like a guy saying, "Hey, I." I've hit 800 home runs, and, and everybody believes him. And then all of a sudden, someone says, oh, hold on a second. We've got proof that there's a guy named Henry Aaron mm -hmm. who actually hit 715 home runs. So you would take uh, Michael Elston's picture off the wall mm -hmm. and put Hank Aaron's picture. I mean, is it something like that? Well, I think what it's like is like, you know, I could purchase a Picasso. It would be mine. I could charge to make prints of it. I could charge to view it. But that doesn't mean I could say I could I, I painted a Picasso just because I own it. Now, he bought a clown act in a, in a trademark and a name and, and, and a look uh, and but that was developed by another by another clown it was developed by hey, you know do you understand it, 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 we're, we're laughing we're laughing about this because when, when you're looking at the pictures and, and the serious business of, of clowning, clowning it just makes me laugh a little bit have you gotten that from anybody that hey these are has anybody said to you about you hey these are just clowns come on man lighten up well yeah I mean I've been called the butcher of bozo before <laughs> <laughs> now, have, now you got this guy Larry Harmon kicked out of the Clown Hall of Fame. At least not, uh, he's not known as Bozo. Have you heard from Larry Harmon since you did this? Well, when I initially wrote an article 
about him back sometime. They got him kicked out in in uh, ninety nine. He sent angry letters that he was outraged um, to my bosses. Uh, and to me and to the Clown Hall of Fame. And then I've called him on other occasions. I, I was preparing the speech that, you know, don't you want to make a comment? You still own the rights to Bozo. And we're honoring the original Bozo. It would be appropriate for you to say something. He has yet to return a call. He has, and have you, have you taken down his plaque? I, yes, we did at the Clown Hall of Fame. Well, isn't there room to honor both men? Hmm, that's, that's the whole story. There is room to honor both men, but Larry wouldn't share. Oh. Larry wouldn't share. That's oh. not that's not in the spirit of, of clowns, is it, Catherine? No, it isn't. But if, if I could ask you, Pinto is past the original bozo. Do you think that Pinto would share his honor with Larry? Well, I'll tell you something. We, we were here with with members of his family, and he and he just seemed like a very generous guy, a great family guy. I mean, Pinto Colvick is not just the original bozo, but he originated the voice of of Goofy and Sleepy and Grumpy for Disney. Well, he was a voice of Bluto and Popeye the Sailor. Well done. And he was a Munchkin voice. Well done. Hey, uh, mm. and a, well done. A guy who did tremendous great things that live on to this day. And it's like it's like I always say, a Pinto had big shoes to fill. <laughs> yeah, a little, little clown joke. Sorry about that. I, uh, this is serious stuff. So, here. Buck, it says here on this on this uh, piece of PR, I'm looking at ABC. Now, come on. Is that like the ABC that I watch? Channel 7? I mean, real ABC? Peter Jennings ABC? Or is it like yeah, already been chewed? We work in the same building, Peter Jennings and I. Oh, okay. What other, what other news stories have you unearthed besides the fact that the wrong bozo is in the Clown Hall of Fame? <laughs> Well, I was the guy who proved that uh, there are at least 30 men in the United States who are licensed to drive and named Santa Claus. <laughs> All right. <laughs> there you go. Touche. <laughs> well, Is this your uh, area of expertise, this kind of stuff? You know? Yeah, I do this sort of pop culture that falls off the table, as they say. Well, and uh, Sounds like fun. And this, uh, Catherine? this grew hair, so to speak, and it was bright red hair. <laughs> Catherine, how much does it cost to get into the International Clown Hall of Fame there in Milwaukee? It's so it's so low, it's not even worth mentioning. It's well, would you please? Dollars. That, how, how much? It's just a few dollars. And just you, a few dollars? It's the only clown museum in the world. This is where you can learn it all. Could you tell me how many? Because I'm two planning dollars. A, to only two dollars. Two now, dollars wow. is a, uh, that's a uh, that's a steal. That's a, that's a oh, bargain. I think that's that's a terrific is deal. Unlimited. If I wanted to, if I drove to Milwaukee this weekend, as I'm considering, and I laid down my two bucks, let's say I came in at nine. Would I would I have if I left after a couple hours would I have to repay or would you stamp my hand? We would just let you come back in. Wow, that's right. Wow. Now, if somebody wants, we even charge you the two dollars. Your, your clown uh, international clown hall of fame and research center. Yes. What, explain the. Re <laughs> you can understand for this is for all this. And stuff. I do, and I hear this a lot. Explain the research center to me. We've done research for some pretty impressive organizations. We actually uh, provided some case studies for the uh, Patch Adam book. Okay. Huh. And uh, we've done research for a hospital in Tel Aviv to try uh, to start a clown program there in the hospital. We've clown done therapy. It. All right. Well, clown therapy. How do you feel about hand buzzers? How do you feel about uh, hand buzzers as opposed to squirting flowers? Oh, they're all great. What about <laughs> whoopee what? cushions? You name it. What about the gum that makes your teeth black? Well, that's good too. My, I have boys, and they love that type of stuff. <laughs> so, if somebody, if somebody comes out with a statement that says research says. This is the perfect throwing pie. It, it may have come from the International Clown Hall of Fame and Research Center. You never know. You no. never yeah. know. Now, Catherine, are you yourself a, uh, a clown? No, in fact, I'm not. I, really? I, I was told I would ruin my act if I became a clown. So no, I don't. I don't want this discussion. I don't want this discussion to go poorly. I want to ask you about a topic that was brought up on the show. Are you aware of this weird underbelly of clown pornography? It's not really clown pornography. Yeah, they, it's sickos that masquerade themselves as clowns. And they're not, they don't count as real, real clowns. Oh, absolutely. So if you were in clown porno, you could never get in the International Clown Hall of Fame. No, I'm afraid not. And, and this is uh, this big ceremony for the original Bozo. His family is going to be there, Buck. They're, they're all going to be there. Yeah, it, was, it was Saturday, and they Saturday, okay. all were there, and it was, they it must was have been really proud. amazing. Because they must have been This guy has proud. never been honored. Pinto Kolvik was never honored in life or death hmm. for creating a clown that named Bozo. I mean, now we have Democrats calling Republicans Bozos, re Republicans calling Democrats Bozos, uh -huh. and it all started with this guy named Pinto. Why only open 10 till 4? Why not? Why not make the fun? 
more than just six hours a day, uh, Catherine. Listen, when the lines start forming outside the door, we'll extend our hours. I'd be more than happy to. Uh -huh. and, and, and on the Wolf Files, uh, Buck, anything, what are you working on now? I mean, you've obviously uh, done some good with Pinto. What are you, uh, you know, what are you doing? You're, you're asking the tough questions. Well, well what's, I, we might take that? another look into Houdini. You know, Houdini said he yeah, was going to yeah. come back. Okay. I'm dead if it was that. Oh. Finally a topical. <laughs> Very well, good. listen, if we talk to Larry Harmon, we'll tell him he's a son of a bitch. He's not the original <laughs> bozo. He's dead to us. We spit on his big shoes. And, uh, hey, everybody, let's hear it for the International Clown Hall of Fame and Research Center. Of yeah. we, I think we've got all that we can get out of this story right now. Lucky. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you both. Thank you, guys, and, and good luck with, uh, with uh, your future clowning stuff. <laughs> thank you very I know, much. I know it's not directly related. Would you be at all impressed to know that we had a woman on the show a couple of weeks, weeks ago who owns John Wayne Gacy's brain? It's, that's really not related. You're right. So, uh, so I, I, so but I, it is kind of related because he wore clown suits. He'd be another one that but they would. He would count. not get into the clown hall of fame. Absolutely right. not. That's no. the Buck's book too. He's got an article on good clowns and bad clowns. So you'll have to get uh -huh. to the wolf files. Oh yeah. So you you know all the good ones and the bad ones, Buck. I can, yes. If if you want, I could put you through to Ouchie, the S N M clown from. Oh, we've, we've had, had, had Ouchie on the show. Been on the show. <laughs> we've had Ouchie on the not show. Surprised. Not surprised. Not right. surprised. <laughs> all right. Thank you guys. Okay. Bye bye. Right. And I'm not surprised you weren't getting a clown music right. either. <laughs> well, that's right. the her. You know. Oh, there they go. They're yeah. gone. There they go. All right. You know what they could do is like Madame Tussauds. They could do like a Chamber of Hearts. And we do have I'm sorry, the, the research clowns. center made me laugh. And we do have a follow-up. of We mentioned clowns. Last week we had the story of uh, Spanky the Clown. Yes. Spanky the Clown, who was evil, right? Spanky was a pedophile. Perry, the yeah. perverted, a perverted clown. Mm -hmm. And I think we had some clowns calling in. And we got a, a letter from a clown in Amherst, New York. Mm -hmm. uh, the clown works at an insurance uh, company. <laughs> this was a follow-up to uh, the clown shortage. Remember, we spoke to the... Yeah, uh, the uh, terrible clown. Yeah. Uh, right. Right. Dear Don and Mike, I heard you speaking to a clown expert last week and asking questions about clown funerals. Mm. The clown you had on your show denied that clown obituaries are used and that they will they wear a full persona in the casket. Please check this out. Mm. And this is from the local newspaper, uh, dated May 17th. A mass, a mass of Christian burial for Audrey Rudinke of Sloan, who entertained children for 27 years as Puddin' the Clown. Oh, Puddin'. P-U-D-D-I-N, the clown. <laughs> was offered today in the Immaculate Heart of Mary Catholic Church. Hmm. Prayers were said, uh, blah, blah, blah. She worked as a bank teller. Uh, she enjoyed uh, children. And, yes, indeed, she was buried in her clown outfit. Oh, oh. that's just... And as you can see, as, as opposed to what the other clown expert told us, Mike, from the Amherst uh, newspaper, right. here in the obituaries is the picture. It's got a real name, but she's wearing her clown's... Oh, Puddin', and kind of a low-key clown outfit. Puddin' the yeah. clown. Unlike Bozo, when you look at Bozo and that makeup uh, collection, that's scary. Yeah. Because Bozo, to me, has always been one step next to uh, Pennywise. <laughs> 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 a little scary. And maybe someday Puddin' can get in the HOF. And I wonder if clowns have to do that. Oh, you forgot to ask that question. If they it's... sign their names, HOF. We've been with... Uh, and when I say be, been with, I mean, of course, sexually. Yes. We've, uh, we've been uh, with and in the presence of uh, some Hall of Fame football players. Right. And They get to sign, sign their name a special way. When uh -huh. they signed, for instance, uh, Sam Huff. Mm -hmm. Sam Huff, H-O-F. Hmm. So what are you waiting for? Keep practicing. I'm hungry. And for a while, we thought it was just a Redskins thing, because Sonny Jurgensen did it all the time right. as well. But then I was looking through some of my Packers stuff, and I got something signed by Bart Starr that yeah. says... H O F. So, so they've been must, doing it a long time. Must, it's like a way for them to make extra dough. You I, know, know, I think a clown that would uh, be uh, entered into the fame, uh, the Hall of Fame, would be able to sign their name, you know, in crayon H O F. So here's the deal: <laughs> if you're out there and you've got a Larry Harmon H O F autograph, please let us know. Get thyself to eBay. Oh man, yeah. right away, because yeah. I'm talking about untapped millions, much more valuable. It's more valuable than gold. And you know the thing that they were. Did you read between the lines? You had an issue with Larry Harmon. You know that he was a little tough to deal with. Yeah. I think that's the whole deal. They were talking about that. Yeah. Right now, you know, this whole thing doesn't happen if Larry Harmon just acknowledges the now, guy did, that right. was the originator. Now, did you ever get through to Larry Harmon when you tried to call Bozo? I spoke to Harmon's people. <laughs> <laughs> and Harmon's people said, uh, and who is this? I said, it's Rob Spiewak from CBS Radio, which mm -hmm. is what I always say. Yeah. Right. And they said, that's oh, right. Nice. Um, and you would want to talk to Larry about? I said, about the Clown Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I'll give him the message. Oh, really? Wow. That's okay. it, huh? All right. Well, there's, our, there's clowns in the news. Here's and the then clown. she called me Ron. <laughs>
excellent clown. <laughs> <laughs> we got a we got a break. Um, listen, maybe that wasn't age appropriate for kids to hear the sad, sad news about well, about Larry Berg, uh, Larry uh, Larry Harmon, <laughs> Larry Harmon, um, Larry. When we when we come back, uh, you will want to get the kids around the radio oh. because it's it's the time for the Harry Potter hotline. Oh, oh fantastic! Because the movie's opening this weekend. I sure hope it's live again. Great As service. a matter of fact, do we have the touchstones? Yeah. Let's give away these tickets. We have. Uh, Although we generally don't like the image of being a family show, no, um, we do have tickets for the whole family. Okay, okay, for That's the first good. four huh. families to call. That's a good thing. Eight seven seven three six five thirty six thirty six. You will win family four packs to our Harry Potter premiere. Oh, wow! Wow! We're having a Harry Potter premiere. Oh, that's so exciting! I'm not going to be able to make it. How queer are we? <laughs> we are having a Harry Potter premiere. Of course, the movie opens Friday. I like the mysticism. <laughs> our premiere is Thursday. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Thursday. <laughs> Centerville Multiplex Theater, and we want to thank. AOL for broadband. Of course we do. With AOL for broadband, you get everything you need to turn an ordinary high-speed connection into a complete Internet experience. I like the mysticism. But now, all you soccer moms, call now. Yeah. Uh, we have how many of these? Five? We've got five of these family four-packs. If you want to take the brats to see the movie one day before it opens, dial recklessly now. Uh, we'll take the first five families. After caller 100 at 877-365-3636. I'm so excited. And then we'll have, uh, well, you know, we'll find out from Harry Potter if he has any thoughts about Bozo when we come, come right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. When the tumor was dissected into tiny pieces and analyzed, pathologists found it to contain some very bizarre things. A dermoid is an unusual type of tumor. It can contain any type of human tissue. And in fact, this patient had both hair and teeth in portions of this uh, massive tumor. Seacrest! Out! Seacrest! Out! Seacrest! Out! Seacrest! Out! Right. See you guys! Seacrest! Out! Seacrest! Out! Tumor! Seacrest out! Seacrest out! Seacrest out! Seacrest! Oh, I get it. He's a zoomer. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Take this square world and blast off for Hicksville. Yeah. We apologize in advance for Don Geronimo and Michael Mera. Let's do this. A bunch of ha happy, happy families. Brian Seacrest <laughs> equals zoomer. <laughs> See, Mike? That's good stuff. <laughs> Thinking man show. That's, qu <laughs> That's quality <laughs> stuff. How did Mike? Who's this? Hi, this is Matt. Um, Matt, uh, you won tickets to the Harry Potter movie premiere Thursday. Cool. So you will get to see it a day before the Great Unwashed. All righty. Thanks to AOL for broadband. How's that? How's that sound to you, Matt? Uh, sounds all right. I'm just I'm gonna give them to my family. I don't really care about it. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that enthusiasm. The excitement of yeah. giving away premier tickets. Another winner. Thank you. Get that. Hello, Donna Mike. <laughs> Who's this? Who's this? This is Amanda. Amanda, you've also won tickets to our Harry Potter premiere. You'll see it a day oh. before anybody. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. There you go. Happy soccer, Mike. Right. You're awesome, Amanda. That was an awesome winning thing. Thank you. Hello, <laughs> Don and Mike. Who is this? This is Scott. Scott, where are you from? Woodbridge. All right. Uh, Scott, you have kids? Yes. Do they like Harry Potter? They love it. Okay, take them on Thursday. That's a day before, so you have to take them out of school or something. Will do. All right, my friend. Thanks. Okay. Schools are winding down anyway. That's right. Yeah. It's almost that time. Yeah. Go carve a lightning bolt in your forehead with a magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> Dope. Hello, Don and Mike Show. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Mysticism Hotline. <laughs> What's your name? Uh, it's Brett. Brett, you want to take your kids to our premiere of Harry Potter? Hell yeah. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! All right, make sure they're wearing their seatbelts. Hell yeah! <laughs> and don't let them sit in the back of the truck. Hold on a second. Let's get one more big wiener. Hell yeah! Hello. Go, go. Don and Mike, who's this? Hi, this is Jolene. Jolene? Jolene? Yeah. How about you, Jolene? I'm fine. How are you, Jolene? What, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Jolene, you got to say hi to Beth Ann. I will. Hi, hi Beth Ann. Hi, brand new. Producer Jolene. It's Jolene. Jolene. Hey. How many how many critters you got? How many youngins you got? I have three. You got, you got three. three and all how many boys. how many critters in the family? Uh, three, all boys. 
Do they like Harry Potter? Yes, they, they love Harry Potter. I was well, talking about pets, and I knew she had three kids, but how many critters do you have? Zero. Oh, you don't oh. have no critters at all? No, none at all. How about that, Jimmy Johnson? Oh, yeah. Critters. Yeah. What do you tell me, beautiful? This morning, eight critters was asleep in my feet. Well, congratulations to you and your critters and your kids. Thank um, you. You're going to see the Harry Potter premiere Thursday, June 3rd. The Don and Mike Harry Potter premiere. Ah. <laughs> How creepy so is that? And I appreciate it. Thank you. Say hi to our uh, emissary, Spanky the Clown, who will be out there. Spanky will be there <laughs> signing <laughs> autographs. That's courtesy of uh, AOL for broadband. Don't, let, don't borrow his pen, though. We have, uh, <laughs> we have more tickets to give away this week. What is this one? Oh, yeah, remember, let me take a peek at my pot. Uh -huh. yeah. My lady's I forgot. What is this? Critters and Vittles. Come on, Granny, tell us. Hey, Granny. Let me take a peek in my pot. Oh. <laughs> All right. Can I take a peek, too, Granny? That's today's. Oh, Granny. I think you will want to leave the top on that pot. Bro. Oh, Granny. <laughs> I would imagine. There's nothing quite like Granny peeking in her pot. Can you imagine that? <laughs> That's the other one, too. You <laughs> get that, that hot. Steam coming oh off. God. Yes, Chief. Well, she opens up oh. that pot. Um, we'll give away more of these Harry Potter tickets tomorrow. And now, kids, are you ready? Here we go. Don and Mike show ready to have some fun as we call the automated Harry Potter hotline. Do, 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 do. All right, let me get the music. Here. Great service, kids. Thank you. Here. Hold on a second. Hey. Well, they started the music and everything. Wait a minute. Very popular feature. Do, do, do. Okay. Two, 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 two. Oh, dear. It's We're having some sort of meltdown with the phones. That's busy. Hold on. What's happening? Oh, all well, the kids are calling it. Well, they can't call it, Buzz. It's a secret number. Oh. It's the Harry Potter hotline. <laughs> Something tells me. Hello. Ah. And welcome to the Harry Potter hotline. The information source for everything you need to know about Hogwarts and America's favorite wizard. To find out when Harry's coming to your town, press 1. Hey, Harry. For merch, yeah. <laughs> it's Harry Morgan, right? Oh, you didn't buy the automated thing. I thought I was sounding more robotic. So this is Harry Morgan, right? To peek in my pot, press 7. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't really need to. As a matter of fact, none of the numbers really work. They're just empty sounds, and I talk about anything I want to talk to. What would you like to talk about, young man? I'd like to press 7 and hear you talk about your, lo your love of Rob Spiewak. Well, that's no problem at all. Rob Spiewak. A wonderful person on the Don and Mike show, and a close personal friend of me, hmm. Harry Potter. <laughs> Nothing I like better than hearing about Rob's weekends with Carrie, his wife. <laughs> and I'll tell you another thing. What's I'm that? excited about Rob getting all that unwanted hair <laughs> lasered off his back. Oh, I bet that's... you are. I'll tell you right now, am I excited? It's going to be exciting to feel Rob's back when it's free of all that unwanted matted hair that makes him look like a monkey. <laughs> I actually spend time thinking about Rob. Wow. I'm thinking about his back, his hairless back, and how it might look, <laughs> feel, on my touch, I'd like to massage his meaty flanks. You've reached the Harry Potter hotline. How are you, Don? What's all this craziness I hear with your show? Getting excited about a Harry Potter premiere? Yeah, well, you know we don't care about that wizard. Oh, you know we don't, but people you do. You care about me. That's why you call the Harry Potter hotline. Is Rob around? Oh boy, wizard. <laughs> He's here. Look. Could you put him on the phone, please? <laughs> okay, I'll press five. And press five here. to let me talk to Rob. I'm here, Rob Spiewak. Smooth, Rob. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Hello? Is Rob there? Speaking. Hey, Rob. 
Harry. It's like, Harry Potter. Would you like to wear my cape of invisibility? Oh, no. And then I could give you my new Harry Potter lube. <laughs> what is that? It's exciting new product. Is, line. That, is that for your car? It's lube. <laughs> Say no more. No. Rob, are you there? I'm it's here. The, it's for the car, isn't it? I think Rob. it must be. Hi, Harry. <laughs> Did you have a good memorial? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a good Memorial Day weekend? <laughs> I did. How what about did you do? Oh, you have yeah. a picnic? You know what sure. I bet he did? Wait. Hey, Don. Hey, Harry. Hi. I bet at some point over the weekend, Rob... Where's Buzz? I'm here, Harry. <laughs> Hi, Buzz. Hi, Harry. Hey, Rob, how many showers do you think you took over the weekend? I think I'm probably... Um, long weekend, so three. Hey. Press, press three for information about Rob's showers. Press three, and I'll talk to your new producer from the South, B.A. McBride. <laughs> Hi. Is she there? Well, she's listening in the other room. I want to talk to her now. Well, uh, she's going to have to get her ass in here because I can't. Bring her in. I can't put you on. Rob, are you still there? It's Harry. Harry Potter. Don. Hi, Harry. How was your weekend? Hi, Harry. It's great. Don. Yes. Are you wearing one of your Hawaiian shirts today? You can see that. Of course I am. Of course I can. Hey, Buzz. Hey, hey, Harry. It's a good color for you. Thank you. Rob. Yes? You were about to tell me about your Memorial Day picnic. <laughs> Yeah. Did you did you roast some Johnsonville broth? I think we had a hot, just plain hot dogs, Harry. When are you getting the hair taken off? Tomorrow. Did you what bathe time? over the weekend? Yeah, I told you I took uh, took a shower every day. You took a shower every day? I did. How long? Well, I mean, I, I don't know, ten minutes. Tell me about it. Not much. Do you to shampoo? Tell. But do you shampoo first? I do. I do. I just purr. Do you do your face? With the shampoo, or do you use a separate product like soap or a body wash? Dial. Dial soap? Antibacterial. So let's get this straight. You get into the shower, you shampoo first, and then you wash up with dial soap. Yeah. Yeah. Press 9 to let me watch. What? Wow. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Having a good time with the Harry Potter hotline. <laughs> Press 5 to hear Harry talk about why he thinks Rob is special. <laughs> Rob is special. Yes, he is. I love to watch him just because he's Rob. <laughs> he's such a good boy. That was, that was a haiku. That, yeah. Yeah, that was didn't an, rhyme. It wasn't exactly, oh, what a feeling when you're dancing. To you hear a rhyming poem, press three. I like Rob. Yes, I do. But what I really like is Rob's... No, I can't say... Well, you've reached the Harry Potter hotline again. <laughs> press zero to get that man in the studio. Where is she? I want to chat with her. I don't know. Beth Ann? Hey, B.A. I want to find all about your country girl. The new hire on the Don and Mike show. Real excited about that. Here she comes. All right, press five to talk to our new producer, B.A. McBride. Hi there. Is this Beth Ann? Yes, it is. How do you like working on the Don and Mike show? So far, so good. How's your first day going? Going very well. It's great to have you aboard. Thank you. Know, you. you know who she spent a lot of time with, Harry? Who's that? Rob Spiewak. Oh. Not isn't, he, shower, though. isn't he great, though? He is great. He's he a special him. boy. I've liked him ever since I met him the first time. All right, will you do me a favor, Beth? Sure. Tell Rob to get on the phone. Okay, you got to <laughs> press another thing for that. Press four to put Rob back on the line. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. You have a good day now. Are you there, boy? Hi, Harry. How are you? Hello, Rob. <laughs> you. That Rob, was a... Are you going to see the premiere of Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> I was I, can't. I don't have anyone to go with. That was the worst smoke screen in the world. You didn't really want to speak to B.A. You no. wanted to speak to... to... I just board. thought I could get through to Rob by going through the producer now. And he's here, and it works, so don't yell at me. I'm happy, and I'm old. And I tell you, I like one person and only one person on your show. And his initials are R.S. Uh -huh. Rob Spiewak. What's he up, likes H me, too. Hi, H.P. Hi, Rob. How um, are you? So want to go to the movies tomorrow? I do. Let's go to Harry Potter. Or better yet, there's a foreign film playing in downtown D.C. with subtitles and beautiful people that you'd enjoy. Let's get a message for the little kids. Then later on, we could go out for sushi, you and me. Oh, that'd be mm. nice. Don't you like that? How about a California roll with a special dipping sauce? All right. How about a message huh? for the nice. kids? All right. Do I have to? Here's the message for the kids. Harry's coming to your theater soon. Another great adventure of Harry Potter and all the wizardry and magic that you've come to expect from the finest character ever put on film for young boys and girls. So make sure you make mom and dad drag you out 
to see Harry Potter this weekend. Forget that green creature called Shrek 2 and come see me, <laughs> Harry Potter. Thank you for calling the Harry Potter hotline. It's been a real slice of heaven. We'll call again tomorrow. <laughs> what? And remember. What's that? If it smells like yeast, go to work on it. Huh. Make it go away. Should be lots of fun. Thank you. Bye, Harry. Hey, Don, you all take care now, you hear? <laughs> and I love the Beverly Hillbillies. Ah. Especially Jethro. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Harry. All right, well, there's the Harry Potter hotline for today. Man, that is always... All over the place. You know, they yeah. keep telling me it's automated, but it sure don't no, sound automated. Obviously, it not sound automated to me at all. Not at all. And boy, does he love you, Rob. I know. Yeah, you bring B.A., and it was like, okay, enough of B.A. Where's Rob? It's a special relationship they have. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, there's so much stuff we've not gotten to on, on today's show. Um, Joe. Joe, yeah. yeah. Joe and Joe. the cicadas 17 years later. Many years later. We'll play that tape. Hold on. Here is Andrea. Andrea? Andrea. Hello, Andrea. Yes, this is Andrea. Yes, Andrea. Hello. Yes, yeah. I haven't heard from you guys in about 15 years. Oh, really? And, and I'm back in the area, and I didn't know you all were still in the air. We are, yeah. 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 I had a dog that won um, $850 14 years ago in the Barkov contest. She really? barked 85 times. Really? Yeah, fantastic. How have you been since then, Andrea? <laughs> I'm fine, but I don't do crazy things like that. You How are your meds? No. <laughs> you all called me the crazy parrot lady. Cause ah, I, yes. How are your meds? Are, are you still on your meds? Is the cocktail correct? The what? Are your medications. I'm not on any medication. You are nothing. <laughs> Might we suggest some? No. No, things have calmed down. I just garden a lot these days. You garden a lot. Garden a lot. Mm -hmm. Are you wearing like a... Are you like wearing a Wiccan priestess outfit right now? No. You got the Vish green thumb? Nope. That's wonderful, yep. Andrea. Well, we've missed you terribly. So it's been how long since we've talked to you? You said 14 um, years? I guess about 14 wow. or 15. 14 years. I can't tell you. That. Every day I wake up, I go, what happened to crazy Andrea? Yeah. Fantastic, right. yes. <laughs> wonderful, crazy parrot. You still have parrots? parrots? No, Andrea? I don't. I don't have any parrots or anything. What have I been telling you, Don, for 14 years? She will call back. Yeah. yeah. Every day. <laughs> yeah, right. Andrea, Andrea, how does your garden grow? Well, Andrea, I guess we'll chat again. Brown and June. First, two I remember when thousand eighteen. I remember when Bart started kindergarten. How old is he now? Uh, well, he's a, a sophomore in college now. Yeah, right. So she comes out every seventeen years. Honey, John, you're lying. No, he's got to be about fifteen or something. No, no, uh, honey. Listen, Andrea, I don't know, really don't know what rock you've been under, but kindergarten it, begins at five years old, if, Andrea. If you do the math, my son is nineteen, and he is well, starting his sophomore year at, at college this fall. Okay, well, my daughter was on the air with you when she was twelve, and she's twenty-five now. She just had her first baby. Sure, so sure she did. So that's been 14 years. Sure she right. did. Yeah, Whatever she had a little boy. She named him no, see, I'm doing the same thing to you that you did to me. I'm, you know, I, right. I believe you that, that you had a... Do you believe that Don's son is 19? No, I don't think he's that old. Well, he is. It's the he truth. I can tell you, Andrea, yeah. it's the truth. Believe it. I mean, I know Don does not question your daughter's uh, 25 years She's on this 25. planet. She's 25. She just had her first okay. baby. Right. Okay. I heard that ever. Yeah. Congratulations. He's named him Mike. What about the uh, baby? Named him Mike. Thank you for doing that. What about the baby's daddy? Uh, he has nothing to do with the situation. Oh, okay. Oh, in the garden. Okay, no. Rob. <laughs> Rob. <laughs> did you hear that? Did you hear that shout of unbridled joy from no. the back of him? Like you won the lottery? Ah! <laughs> ah! All right, Andrea. Well, yes, my son is in college, uh, and you are doing as fantastic as you were. You know, I, Mike, I love it when listeners call once every 14 years. Isn't that wonderful? That's exciting. Yeah, my other daughter's three months along, and her husband, she is That's married. fantastic. And he's Okay. Listen, who right. freaking cares? He's in Iraq. Thank you. Okay, well, he's in Iraq. Well, thank, oh. tell him thank you for serving our country. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But it was thank nice you. to hear from you guys, because I don't live around here anymore. Okay, okay Too bad, Andrea. Oh. So okay. maybe in Well, look at the clock, Andrea. Look at the, look at the time <laughs> we spent. For, thank yeah. you for checking in. Got to run. You're very welcome. Okay. Thank you, Bye, Bye scary Bye. Andrea. Bye-bye. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I'm as attracted to you as I was. Hello? She's gone. Oh, Mr. Chan has gone. The broom is left. Uh, now, it won't be another 14 years until mm -hmm. I'm able to tell dear Andrea how much I enjoy her phone call. Well, yeah, maybe next uh, next time Andrea can wait as long as the cicada. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. Hey. 
You guys had shirts on when you came in here. There's something happened to him, man. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Cole. You just put the shirts back on. You see that sign? No shirt, no shoes, no, no dice. <laughs> right. Learn it. Know it. Live it. It's on in my show. Yes, we have company. Get out of here, Curtis. I don't hear you unless you knock. They bring you very best wishes. And may Happity and Happy Hawks be with you forever. Don Geronimo and Michael Mera. Right, right. We had so much going on today. Yeah. Um, three hours ago, we started this show. We mentioned uh, the cicadas and Joe's cicada tape from 1987. I spoke with Joe before the show, and he indicated that uh, he wasn't as quite as successful with this uh, cicada recon. Now, as it turns out, in 1987, when the cicadas arrived the last time, right. Joe went out and got bombed and made an amateur uh, DJ tape. And they were incredible. I mean, you could hear the cicadas. They were thick with them, middle of the night. We asked Joe to go out this year and get bombed. And as it turns out, this is not something we're going to be able to hear in, in one segment. There are five different cuts on this, on this Joe tape. Hmm. And you should also know that he called Rob and he called Buzz yes. in the middle of the night while he was drunk making this tape. And we do have saved... The the messages that he sent oh, to Rob. Very good. You know, you ever just feel sometimes the God above is watching out for you? For some reason, I left my cell phone in the car this weekend. Right. And that's the only reason I didn't get out of bed at one ten and one fourteen. <laughs> I did. Uh, I got out of bed. Now he did, did you get out of bed, Buzz? Yes, I did. Buzz. Yes. So <laughs> let's let's hear the beginning of Joe's tapes. Then we can hear uh, the messages he left uh, for Rob. Uh -huh. Again, the assignment was Joe recreate the magic right. that you did back in 1987. And here's Joe from this past weekend bombed in his backyard. Micah check it, check it, check it. Ooh, that's sweet. <laughs> this is the now Joe, right? I have to turn this up as much as I can. A little bit down. It sounds like the TV's on. I don't know if you're catching that, but that is the background sound of uh, our sister station, WCXS. And let me back off the microphone a little bit. Maybe I'll pull off the level a bit, because now I'm much more sophisticated, much more um, Drunk. professional, if you will. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, uh, our sister station, WCX. Something. I've never heard of that. I don't know. The you see, Rock see around here? You know, the one that Is he you talking about Arrow? Here, Fleetwood Mac. Uh, Is it that Tom Gavin's uh, public Able access TV station? station? Either way, let's, let's push, push your head because he knows not what he's talking about here. A bothered know. or otherwise followed by Led Zeppelin. Because <laughs> if you don't, if you don't believe me, then just listen. Right now they're playing commercials, which is very much like our station. WJFK, 106.7, Washington Superstation. Hey, I'm going to push pause for a second, okay? Don't go away. Okay, listen, this is, this is Ardinger, and I'm checking in at 12.45 a.m. Joe. Okay? I'll be back hey, soon. Hey, we, we do have a lot, We've got a lot going on that we're going to... Get those lugkas, and we'll talk more about that after this. <laughs> hey, here's the deal. You know, it's a little earlier for Joe now. You know, it, it was 3 o'clock when he was a younger man. Now, 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 it's now 1 o'clock. You know, by 11 o'clock, he's all ramped up. <laughs> Check no. tennis. One, two. <clears throat> oh, 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 excuse oh, me. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta hear that one again. <laughs> Check test one two. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Introducing Average Joe. Some of those locusts in my throat. <laughs> Listen tonight, it's it's Ardinger, and um, we're going to do some interviews on my cell phone. Ah. Now you won't be able to hear them, <laughs> but uh, it'll be cool because I have a lot of really great people on my list. Let me just check and see what I've got here. Well, I've got Buzz Burbank. I can call him, and it's it, you know it's early right now. It's it's only twelve fifty three a.m. and that's nowhere close to when I'm going to go out and check out the locust. Ah, now keep in mind, he's doing. He's doing I'm locust. giving him his props. Yeah. He's doing a full fledged show. 
Bro. keep saying locusts, but we're actually sending him out for, cic- for cicadas. This like. is so much better. This is better. And he's doing something. He didn't just walk outside and try to find bugs this time. He's doing a whole show. All right. Hey, Rob, can you pull your cell phone up? Yeah. Can you pull those messages up? <laughs> you can hear the messages that he left Rob. He, uh-huh. You're, you're going to hear on this tape. Where he does call Buzz, yes, and he actually holds the tape recorder up to the cell phone. Very cool. So you can hear Buzz at one o'clock in the morning. You know, what the what the hell are you doing, Joe? <laughs> hello, hello. But he, he did not. Call, he did not get a hold of Robbie. Actually, you know what? You can just do it on the air. Yeah, we can do it on the air. All right, here we go. Okay, you press the buttons. Go ahead. Is it connected? Ah, oh, there it's ringing. Hi, he reached me. I know, he's got his name shot. I can't make fun of him, though. I stole it. <laughs> it's the greatest thing. I got a jingle on my phone. People never figure out. All right. What was that thing? You were singing your name? <laughs> and come on, fourth ring. Here we go. You have reached the Sprint Voice mailbox of... Rob Spielak! Rob Spielak! Okay, now pot it down. Okay. Uh-huh. I saw your code. First, save message. Have all my messages. From <laughs> Joe. Because that's what I've lived for. Here we go. Received May 30th at 133 a.m. <laughs> oh, right after me, I think. Hey, Rob, you're live on uh, Ardinger here. <laughs> it's called Ardinger here. And you're live on it. So pick up the phone, please. He's not calling you to hold no, the phone I, yourself, I don't right? have any locusts down here or cicadas or any of that stuff. And I need a guest real quick. I need a guest. And I don't have Don's number, so could you give me Don's number maybe? And then oh. I'll call him. Boy, was I lucky. <laughs> well, maybe not. Call you a good idea. You know, you always think of the right things, Rob. <laughs> hey, thanks. I'll talk to you on uh, Tuesday. Is there, that means you're out. Is there a second message? Uh-uh. Yeah. To send a reply message, press 2. No. To erase, Hold press on. 7. Message saved. Next message from Joe. <laughs> received May 30th at 2.04 a.m. Uh, wow. Hey, Rob. <laughs> I want you to be a guest on my show. Yeah. <laughs> so pick up your phone. I know you're not doing anything better. <laughs> anyway, Arnger out. <laughs> Introducing. You're making my new show. It's called Arnger Now. Arnger Now. It's Arnger now. It's Maybe it's called Arnger something. I don't it was, know. It was Arnger in but before. We're Arnger, Arnger love, here. You said Arnger here. Them and they're not here yet. What? Uh, Joe? Joe? This is just on Rob's cell. So, what is, let's it go. Oh, come on. What happened here? Uh, oh, I got to turn off the phone, man. <laughs> okay, we get the gist of that. Here now is uh, Joe <laughs> Ardinger, our man. Hi, Joe. Joe Ardinger. If you listen to the CD that I made, that entire message is on the other end. No, no, no. I understand. That we're going to we're going to hear that. That's right. why I played that first. So the preview. You told me when you called Buzz, you put the microphone by the phone so right. you can actually hear Buzz. In that case, we won't hear Rob. We'll just hear you giving the message. It's funny to hear the message on Rob. It's great. Oh, it's better to hear it on the machine. Mm-hmm. So, Joe, um, what was your drink of choice on on the Saturday Eve? Uh, well, it was Miller Lite, of course. A can of beer. Wow. And uh, yeah, weekends we, here have a thousand cans of beer. A thousand <laughs> cans of beer and a couple of shots of uh, rain vodka that uh, Rob gave me oh, for my birthday. <laughs> well, just listen to the <laughs> devil is rain. And you you, uh, you were unsuccessful in your pursuit of cicadas, right? There were no bugs out that night. But it sounds like a great Joe show experience. How many different cuts do you have on this on this? I guess five five cuts. And I, I went until I could not. I couldn't even hold my head up anymore. So it just kind of ends. Wow. So it's the combination of uh, the, uh, the the celebrating and the fatigue, right? I yeah. Mean, you just ran out of gas. I am 40. <laughs> yeah. Joke. I was saying you sound like you got ramped up a little early, but then when I hear the call, 2 o'clock, I mean, you're maintaining the same hours. That's I'm not bad. A dedicated broadcast. Yes, you are. All right, get out of here. That's quality <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> World's gentlemen. oldest phone screener. I am 40. I you're here. Don't forget how much he loved his magician. Yeah, he loved on that. His first did, page yeah. on air and off air. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm certainly. <clears throat> oh yeah, and you don't want to. You don't want to miss my on air shot of vodka. 
followed by an on-air shot of Kentucky moonshine. Oh, and I'm not okay. telling where I got that from. Oh, dear. So don't, you know, don't call John Ashcroft and bitch to him about what's going on the radio tonight. Listen, there wow. you go. We're going to save this for a whole segment tomorrow. Good. It deserves it. There's yeah. too much Joe. There's too much drunk stream of consciousness Joe. Joe all over the place. I could listen to this. If we had started this four hours ago, we'd still be playing it now. Absolutely. We wouldn't have gotten anything on today's show. <laughs> Don't even tell him I said bitch. <laughs> yeah. Because I wouldn't want John Ashcroft to associate himself with the word bitch. You know? The guy doesn't even dance. He's angry. Right. Deep, deep thoughts from Joe. Wow. Wow. And Buzz, in this segment that we're going to hear, he yes. does reach you on the uh, telephone at one ten a.m. He does. We have a conversation of about two and a half minutes, I think. Lousy woo woo. Yeah. And from what I uh, what I could uh, garner there, no cicadas. No, no, they're they're not around. No. Uh, you know, you, th this area especially. I mean, you've got them in certain places, and they're not in others. I think the greatest thing about that is his concern when he called me was, I need a guest. I need a guest yeah. to finish the show. <laughs> I need a guest to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Here or now? Yeah, here and now, Joe Arden. Here and now. It's time for the news with Buzz. In a world where owning a radio was strictly forbidden, one man found a way to bring good news to his people. There he is. He made it up. There he is. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't drink. Ashcroft. He doesn't drug. He doesn't dance. Anyway. Here's Buzz. <laughs> Buzz, what is your lead story? On the, and we'll hear all of Joe's uh, cicada drunk tapes uh, tomorrow. we got to get to news now. What's your lead story today, Buzz? Today, it's now legally okay to call someone gay. Oh. Okay, faggot. <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> Speaking of gay. And then we'll, we'll check in on Rabe. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> hmm, who else? Uh, yeah, I really don't have that many people on my phone. Oh, dear. <laughs> All right. We'll hear those tapes tomorrow. Stay tuned for news and comments oh. coming up oh. on the Don and Mike Show. That was very professional. This is the Don and Mike Show. What's the word from Planet Crackpot? The Don and Mike Show. They only hit you because they love you. Don and Mike. Yeah, time for Buzz's News now. Uh, Buzz tonight brought to you by Veramax. You okay over there, yeah, Buzz? I'm fine, thank okay. you. <laughs> I'm <laughs> falling outside. So you're cleaning up? Yes. Uh, Veramax, the world's number one sexual pleasure performance enhancer. Number one because it really works. Someone called for a doctor. Doctor developed, clinically tested, patented. Veramax, get it at one triple eight try. VMAX. And now here's Buzz. Hi, Buzz. Hi, Donna and Mike. Well, according to a judge in Boston, it is these days no longer slanderous or libelous to call someone gay. The judge says slander and libel are for bad things. And since gay is these days not necessarily bad. Michael Elton is Buzz <laughs> To call someone that does not damage their integrity. When gay sex was illegal, to call someone gay would imply they were a lawbreaker. These days, not so much. And maybe not surprisingly... Madonna had something to do with this. She was being sued by a former boyfriend whose name wound up in a book. His name appeared in a caption under a picture of Madonna and a gay man. Not that there's anything wrong with that. With the, what? The that judge's rule. Being in a picture with Madonna? Or well, that's gay part. Now, the lady has gay. moves. Yes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and will be causing such a commu commotion that the authorities will throw us right out of town. <laughs> Madonna! Was, when I was watching Bravo, which is like the only channel... You, have you ever noticed this? You was, seem to watch a lot of Bravo yeah. over the weekend. Well, here's the thing. The weather was bad. Uh -huh. Right. And... It's not when the weather's bad. That could be their new slogan. When the weather's bad, go to Bravo. And it's it wasn't a uh, satellite. It was just uh, it was Comcast, just cable. Ah. Mm -hmm. But like eighty of the channels, all of a sudden, because the weather got bad, mm -hmm. went bad. And the only channels I had left were Fox News Channel, mm -hmm. Weather Channel, uh, E exclamation, and Bravo. Did you happen to see on Bravo this weekend? They reran the Actors Studio with the cast of The Simpsons. No. Oh, really? And it's very cool, but one thing I had I had remembered when I saw it is they went on so long with taping, halfway through, Julie Kavner is gone. <laughs> and I remember reading it, she just got fed up and walked off because she only does three voices. And he's a wicked velociraptor. But, but on, <laughs> on Bravo... All the it buzzes story about about gay. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. I know we've discussed this before. That and we use all kinds of words on our show. We don't mean nothing by it. Right. But for the longest time. Even worse than fag, if you called someone a queer, mm -hmm. like, do you remember back in school, you remember play, did you ever play the game, 
Smear the queer? No, no, I didn't. No, I did. It was kind of like uh, kick the can. Right. Was, you get you. Well, get, words change as times. You get mm -hmm. one guy, and you would just you would just everybody would jump on, and beat the crap out of him. Right. Smear the queer. What we had is you. Would, it was usually a football, and you just run around with the football. If you had the ball, you would get tackled. So. That's how it works. Here's yeah. the here's the point. Back then, and then we, now we have queer eye for the straight yes, guy. And that's right. queer as folk. And, and here's, good thing. here's the thing that I'm seeing on Bravo. Mm -hmm. All every time I turn it on, it was something else is queer. Something else. Well, is queer. Well, that's because was somewhere along the line, the gay community, uh, you know, said it's okay. They, yeah. they, well, they took the word for their own. Right. I mean, that's what they did. And I think it was actually strategic. I don't know the history of it, but I really think that that's what happened. It's a good way to take the sting out of it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I mean, really, I think that. At some point, because that word was used all the time, mm -hmm. hey queer, the gay community said we're gonna we're gonna describe ourselves, we're right. gonna use this, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's what happened. All right. So now it's just queer everywhere. Bravo's a queer channel. Okay. Hallelujah. All of the ads were like, uh, are, are you ready for some queer fun? Sure. Have you missed your five favorite queer? Well, aren't they bringing that back? Isn't yeah. that what they're promoting well, all the time? Oh. Tomorrow night, Mike. Oh, <laughs> tonight. Tonight. Yeah. Tonight. Yeah. tonight. Yeah. tonight I've never seen that show. I'm going to watch it. My wife makes me watch it sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's okay, but here's the thing. Go on. I mean, don't take this the wrong way. They're just too gay. Do they make the gay. guys too gay? Here's what I mean. I don't care what they do. Like, they don't show them making it out or anything. Right. But it's just, it's, they're, they're too, listen, I know they're queer, uh -huh. but they're just, they're too queer. Mm -hmm. and, and the ad, I guess, for the show tonight is they, they meet twins. Right. They meet sloppy, straight twins. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it's them prancing around and going... Oh, no, we just have to do something about your hair. We have to do something about the... And then the guy says, it's the queerest ever. Tonight on Bravo, queer eye for the straight guy. Queer. There you go. Hey, do you like queers? Watch MTV? Forget it. Queers love Bravo. How many hours would you estimate you spent with it over the weekend? You know me, I can flip flip on and flip off. Yeah, if you're going to make it cumulative. Maybe about five hours. <laughs> oh, wow. There you go. Maybe about five hours for <laughs> you. You know, because you got... They were doing a West Wing marathon, so I mm -hmm. turn it on, and when the West Wing wasn't too preachy... I like it. I, I watch it. I watch the one where Martin Sheen got shot. Mm -hmm. where, the one where he got pissed at God and he's standing in the yes, uh, in the church. In the, in the, in the church. I, I, we didn't need a bio of everything that you watched on uh, on Bravo. I was just a uh, you know just kind of curious as how many hours you logged with it. You about know? about five. About five. Mm -hmm. About five. I was alone drinking alone this week. <laughs> ah. That's been documented already. <laughs> What else does a man have to do when he's drinking alone by himself at the beach? He can go out and hit the road and uh, watch a guy in a monkey suit, uh, you know, selling a gym. And then watch Bravo. Yay! Yeah. So queer. <laughs> <laughs> well, a Bush's dad says movie maker Michael Moore is a slime ball. That's the word used by our 41st president, George Herbert Walker Bush. Slime ball. Quoting the former president, I have total disdain for Moore. He says Moore's movie Fahrenheit 9-11 is, quote, a vicious attack on our son. He's free to say whatever he wants, but I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. Oh, hold on. I got tape on both. Here's Michael Moore. There he is. There he is responding. And hold on, if you give me just a second. You finish yeah. that up, we're going to get right. some more George the, Bush tapes. The award-winning movie by Michael Moore explores the financial ties between the Bush family and the Saudis. And uh, the Bush family not happy about that. Fact. I would imagine they wouldn't be. Fahrenheit 911. Right. And here you go. Here's our tribute, uh, part of our continuing tribute to George Bush today. Go Chapter ahead. 3 oh, on the environment. The environment. Excellent. Natural gas is is uh, hemispheric, I like to call it hemispheric in nature, because it is a product that we can find in our own neighborhoods. Now, just let me tell you, uh -huh. we didn't edit these things together to no, make no. these around this way. These are, these are all real. Right. Congress also must understand they got to pass an energy bill. You see, an energy bill would be good for jobs. An energy bill would be good for national security. Uh-huh. We need an energy bill that encourages consumption. <laughs> wow. We will require all power plants to meet clean air standards in order to reduce emissions of sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, mercury and carbon monoxide, carbon di dioxide within a reasonable <laughs> period of time. There's a mercury thing again. All right. Brought this up recently with Vicente Fox, who's a newly elected president. He's a man I know from Mexico, and I talked about how best to be able to expedite the the uh, exploration of natural gas in Mexico and transport it up to the United States, so we become less dependent on foreign sources of crude oil. Good. What? In the Georgia, big Northwest. 
I made it clear to the citizens up there. I oppose yeah, yeah, breaching those dams. I'm sorry, we got yeah. you because they, they go by so quickly. The Mexico I, thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He wants many... to make sure how we can explore. Yeah. He's talking about Mexico, so of we can become less dependent. And it, you, you, we're all listening. We were doing all the same uh -huh. thing. We were listening for the mistakes. But, but, the mis but it wasn't. It was just the general concept. Yeah, because right. it wasn't a mistake so much in what he's saying. It's he was just, saying... It's, I, I'm, it's I'm, everything he's saying. He's saying that I'm meeting with uh, Vincente Fox of Mexico, mm -hmm. as he likes to say, and so we can become less dependent on foreign <laughs> oil. Right. We're exploring natural gas in Mexico. Right, get it? <laughs> I like that. It's up there. I oppose breaching those dams. I know the human being and fish can coexist peacefully. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> one piece of advice, just remember, what? It's the birds that's supposed to suffer, not the hunter. <laughs> What? Wow. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have today for the George Bush pep rally. <laughs> it's the birds who are supposed to suffer. That's right. Well, not the hunter. Bush, <laughs> my man. Wow. Bush. Oh, man. I want to. Uh, Rob, make me a copy of that one. Anyway. The, the Pope, meanwhile, anyway. says the United States is becoming a country oh, without a soul. Pope! The Pope! Round of applause the, um, for the Pope. Have I told you the great joke I heard this this weekend at my brother-in-law's yeah, party? Yeah, you told it three Never times. Never mind. Worth it. Never, no, it's not. Buddy. Okay. No, it's not. Well, the Pope says the U.S. is becoming a country without a soul. He gathered his U.S. bishops on Friday to tell them American society is in danger of giving way to materialistic desires for, quote, a soulless vision of life. Hey, you bishop! Get over there and kick that rook's ass! <laughs> uh, you're, you're making a chess reference, is that yes, right? That's right. Queen to Bishop 3 or that's whatever right. the hell it is. Hey, get the queen! Get the queer! <laughs> queen to Bishop 2. How are you, Your Holiness? I'm partied out, Mike. Ooh. Well, you, what, what were you doing yelling at all the American bishops? What's, uh, what's going on with that? I got so much to say. Also, my favorite bishop. Really? Jason Bishop. Jason Bishop. Hey, what's up, Hurting? <laughs> the sports junkie is very good. <laughs> Their station's not broken. <laughs> oh, and I feel bad for Mel Carmazan. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's no longer going to be, uh, be running our, our ship here. He's going to be taking over things here at the Vatican. Oh, really? I heard he was going to the Disney Corporation. He's actually coming into the Vatican, huh? He's going to be doing some consulting for me. Oh, well, that's good. I know he'll help you uh, streamline everything over at the Vatican. There's How are you feeling, incidentally? You look so frail the last time I saw you. Yeah. So you partied out this weekend. Who were you partying with? Uh, who was I partying with? Give anybody me... Anybody we would know? Just a second. The late Jessica Tandy. Oh, fantastic. Wow. Really? That's... I'm not even going there. Wow. Well, I need a shovel. Oh, did you really? Mm. Saturday night. Anybody associated with this show that you were partying with this weekend? This weekend? Yeah. Oh, a nice, nice boy. Who would that be? He's a retarded boy. Working really? on your show. Oh. Yeah. His name is Joey A. <laughs> hey, Joey A. Yeah. Joey uh -oh. Arden. I'm delighted you had a good time. With I, your had yeah. I had a great time. Joe Arden, Mike. sir. The uh, the Pope ordered the bishop. I was doing shots with Rosemary Clooney. No, oh, were you here. Here. <laughs> My goodness, I guess it's a whole death theme we have going here. <laughs> I drank her under the table. Yes. So, uh, the, the Pope ordered the bishops to get him. And then I banged Marge shot. Really? Oh, you're not supposed to do that. That's illegal, Your Holiness. What's illegal? Well, you're not supposed to in the church. You're not supposed to do I that at all. I didn't do it in the church. It no. was in the seminary. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. In that case. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the Pope ordered the bishops to get hip, to study youth culture and find a way to their hearts and minds. The bishops had come from the heartland, Milwaukee, Chicago, and Indianapolis. Baby got back. Hey, Indianapolis, how do you enjoy the race this weekend? It don't rain in Indianapolis in the summertime. <laughs> Thank you, Your Holiness. God didn't make little oh. green apples. <laughs> and it don't rain in Indianapolis. Poor Melvin. Yeah. I pray for Melvin. I'm but amazed you're this millions dollars. I'm very surprised at that, Your Holiness. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, marching orders for the bishops were to read the signs of the times and to get out the message about what he says Christianity can do to make a more just, humane, and peaceful world and to satisfy the heart's quest for meaning. Does anybody think the Pope really says any of this? Don't you think, really, I mean, all kidding aside, probably mm -hmm. the Pope is a conversation. 
I sure looks I, like that. I yeah. just made. I mean, I find. Is this written material? Is this how it's delivered? Hard to believe. This is what we're hearing that the bishops say that they were told by the pontiff when we met with him on Friday. What That's would you give the, the, the videotape of the Pope saying, "I urge you to get hip." Get hip. Well, yeah. I, get those, hip. Now those are my words, but that's that's the message he probably that he was wants giving a hip, right? <laughs> Yeah, he probably could use two hips. <laughs> Titanium hip. There you go, baby. At this point, really, when you look at the Pope, don't you imagine if, if he just, like, spread his shoulders like this, he'd crack bones? I believe so. He'd have like bones coming and just yeah. popping he through doesn't his look, skin. He doesn't. I mean, he does, though. He goes in front of the, uh, the those huge crowds. Yeah, but and he does him? speak. He gave the greeting, what, in how many languages, right? I mean, yeah, he does that. But I mean, when you hear, it. I agree with Don, when you hear this, it's like, can he really spew all that out? I don't know how. Well, and there you have it. Thank you. We've, and, we've, <laughs> and we've stopped. It's, yeah. uh, the, show is, yeah. the show is actually stopped. We've yes, stopped. it has. Right. Isn't this where we stop anyway? <laughs> this is, bud. Yeah. And... <laughs> bless, me. Oh. bless you. I, I apologize. I don't do that for chocolate. No. Sorry. No. Um, what's next, bud? Uh, besides this delightful taste I have in my mouth. What does it taste like? What's next? Uh, oh. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to know. <laughs> There's definitely blood. Oh, oh dear. Cicada? There's definitely <laughs> blood. No, say, Mike, I've not had any... They're not going to be around much longer, I've and you had. were the talk of my nephew's soccer game. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, they all came down from Boston, and they were fascinated, because they don't have them in Massachusetts. All fascinated with the cicada. You know, I got an idea for a show you and I could do. What's that? That we could go out on the street. Right. I will eat cicadas, yes. and you can just pull your daughter's teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Man, get ready for that carnival. <laughs> we make some money. Buzz, what's next on the news and the comments? Gas stations punished for selling gas too cheaply. Really? Yeah. We'll be right back. This is the Don and Mike Show. <laughs> uh, gosh, I hate to interrupt. It's all been so incredibly fascinating and entertaining and instructive. Really, the time has just flown by. The Don and Mike Show. Promoting voluntary sterilization. The Don and Mike Show. Right, right. Uh, listen, uh, tomorrow on the show, we've got like 20 minutes of Joe drunk looking for cicadas and tapes. Yeah. We'll play those uh, tomorrow and also live uh, tomorrow on the show. Elective surgery. Our own Rob Speedbump. <laughs> we'll be having live on air laser hair removal surgery you, on his incredibly hairy back. Are you nervous at all? Not really. I think it should okay. be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I, it's sad that I'm now leaving the battle of my addiction to elective cosmetic surgery. <laughs> but other than that, I'm very excited. Welcome, you'll, you'll hear it live Good. on the air tomorrow. <laughs> Shaving and numbing starts at four. Shaving and numbing. <laughs> and now here is Buzz, who's been through countless surgeries. Oh, countless. <laughs> and from our, hey, whose side are you on anyway? Dazzling surgeries. Yeah, they've all been dazzling. From our, whose side are you on anyway department, uh, in Minnesota, some gas stations have been fined by the state for selling underpriced gasoline. And it happened just as prices were going up at other pumps just in time for the Memorial Day holiday. Former Governor Jesse Ventura had signed a law requiring gas stations to take in at least eight cents a gallon over and above what they paid for it. Uh, and no taxes that had come out of that eight cents. Wait, what's the, the, That's they, the law. They, the law was that they had to take in profit of eight cents a gallon? Right. Okay, so so they couldn't lower their profit then? No, right, that is correct. All right, okay. To, to, I guess to be competitive, I suppose. But then I was reading something else over the weekend, not in Minnesota, like right. a national story. Mm -hmm. And on one hand, I don't care. On the other hand, I guess I do because I, I don't want to pay a lot for gas. Mm -hmm. Did you read that Walmart... Right. Because Walmart, like, they do everything. They buy everything. They, they can lose money on stuff because right. they sell so much stuff. Uh, people are going after Walmart now, mm -hmm. saying Walmart is not only putting out mom-and-pop stores... Walmart is now with the gas prices putting out gas stations independently on gas stations because, and I saw this when I was driving around this weekend. Why would you want to stop like at an Exxon and pay two twenty nine a right. gallon mm -hmm. when there's a Walmart across the street selling for two o three? Walmart sells gas. Yes, they do. Where, where, do where does Walmart Mart sell gas? Well, in this case, in Delaware. Wow. Mm -hmm. And at at many WalMarts. Throughout, uh, oh, and listen, I got to tell you about Delaware, up in Dover, where the NASCAR is this weekend, right? Do you know that there's already thousands of morons that are camping out up at Dover to get for next week's race? For next, and wow. some of them have been there over a week already. Great location, camping out. Yeah, it, it, it's fantastic. But I saw the Walmart there, and then mm -hmm. I read something saying that like everything, like Walmart's putting Toys R Us out of business. Right. right. Walmart right. buys toys so cheap it sells them. Now they're doing it with the gas. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Even though Walmart's taking over and it's one company running everything, 
Wouldn't you rather pay less for gas? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah right? Absolutely. And, Who wouldn't? And, and the guys that have to pay more because they're not like Walmart, well, you know, that's the American dream. Yeah, and what people don't realize... have low prices. Yes, but the American put dream everybody is, else out of business. Put everybody else out of business, and then you can control your own price. And then you then you raise the price. Right, right. exactly. Price so it's going to beware. Gas too. I think they do the same thing. Price Club sells gas. Oh, Price Club, too. Price Club has had gas for the longest time. Or Costco. Right. Isn't Costco, Walmart? Costco. Aren't they no. the same thing? No, no, no. Price Club and Sam's, Costco are the same Sam's thing. Sam's okay. Club is Walmart. Right. Sam, all right, very good. Right. And I remember back... And they're taking the world over. Mm -hmm. And I remember back in the day when Sears sold gas. Mm -hmm. And I remember because the only credit card I had to my name was a Sears card, and I would drive all the way to goddamn Landover Mall. So you wouldn't have to pay cash for your gas. Correct. Right. Sears gas. And that was that was not a, not inexpensive gas. Well, that Walmart story is also the issue in Minnesota. The Murphy Oil Company wasn't playing by the rules as it pumps it pumps at Walmart and the Quick Trip convenience stores. Here's a uh, here's a comment from the leader of Murphy Oil. I'm not the beautiful lady from Chicago. Murphy Murphy Oil Chairman Dennis. I'm not the beautiful lady from Chicago. Murphy was fined seventy thousand dollars. One Quick Trip location, one convenience store location was fined five thousand dollars for selling gas too cheaply. Apparently, station owners have been turning in their competitors as the wholesale price of gasoline changes every day. So if a, a, a guy across the street sees that you're selling gas for less than, in this case, eight cents over what today's wholesale price is, he'll call the state and turn you right. in. So that's in Minnesota because it's right. written into their laws that they have to make eight cents a gallon. Right. But there are also problems everywhere else in America mm -hmm. where Indeed. you got a Shell station on one corner, you got the Exxon on the other. The Shell guy's going down a penny, and right. the Exxon guy's saying, I'm going to go out of business. All right. the reason that I'm getting a hybrid. There you go. Good get for me you, a hybrid. Mike. I'm going to get a hybrid. Not me. I'm proud. Give me that, give me that, babe. You know what I was getting this weekend? I got the instant thing. Uh -huh. And you know it lies when you push the button for the instant gas mileage. Right. <laughs> 11. 11 miles per gallon? On the highway. And I'm thinking I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm feeling pretty good about <laughs> were, getting on the highway. Were you accelerating or coasting? Coast. I was on, uh, on cruise control. Feeling pretty good about getting 11. You know, at the instant fuel economy. Yeah. You know, on your car. But I mean, what? <laughs> no, there's nothing good you can say about that. <laughs> no, there's not, except it's in double digits. I, I saw mine the other day, and it was zero. You know, and, and but I realized I was going straight downhill. I was vertical. <laughs> I will send you some information. Like that hybrid stuff is bunk. <laughs> Rob. Idiots and hippies. Old man Rob. It's for idiots and hippies. It's a lie. If you want to do good? Get a six cylinder, and maybe not even that. <laughs> a four cylinder. <laughs> hey. Yeah. It was a record-breking moment. That was really old man Rob. Just it's, said. More angry it's Rob. a lie. You don't, you don't need the high bread. <laughs> it's a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> Get Carmen's on out of there. Hey, how you doing, Sumner? I'm doing good, I just want to say. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be my company now. So you got you got rid of our boss, and you put that dork Les Moonves in charge of his radio? Mind your tongue. You mind your tongue or I'll run you out of town on a rail. <laughs> Some the red stuff. There you go. You just mind your P's and Q's there, buddy boy. That's it, you right now, you young whippish never, with your fancy blue Hawaiian shirt and your bald spot. You, I'm telling you right now, you just you just bite your tongue and go out and get some spinach. <laughs> yes, sir. Melvin, you're worth more dead than alive. <laughs> what was, hasn't he done for you? What hasn't he done for you? Yes, sir. Mind your P's and Q's, will you? A record-breaking Memorial Day weekend at the movies, but Shrek 2 held on to the top spot, making $92 million. I was one of those. I was there. I saw it. Everybody was watching Shrek always. The day after tomorrow opened as the movie after Shrek. Still, it made $86 million. Troy was third with $15 million, raising Helen $14 million. Soul Plane rounded out the top five with $7 million. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Hey, look for a spinoff of Shrek also, that mm -hmm. cat. Antonio ah, Banderas yeah. is the cat. Number one character. Both parents and kids love that. Puss and Boots. Funniest oh. lines, funniest part of that movie. Is I that. thought it was Puss and Boots. Yes. <laughs> I, boy, was, I disappointed. Movie entirely. was I disappointed. That's a different movie. That's what? a nasty movie. Finally, Ritzy Party uh, on a Boat. Docked in the Ritzy section of Long Island last night. Fud. Something hits the deck of the boat from above. Oh, sorry. It's a hand. A severed human hand from the sky. My hand. Quoting a police detective, at this point, we don't have a clue where it came from. It's a mystery. Did someone say, all hands on deck? No! 
Oh, there I'm he is. Buzz Burbank on the <laughs> Don and Mike show. It was a hand job. <laughs> 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 Oh, listen, speak, hold on. Speaking of hands, yeah. How about a hand? I let the beautiful lady from Chicago. Hey, somebody call him. They finally found it. It's a how match. About, how about a hand for the, the leader of Murphy Oil? <laughs> match. <laughs> we got to go. We'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. Good day to, Good you, day to you, sir. You. Name that baby. Okay. Goodbye, Kim. Stay and new to your pets. Eat a lot. Till we meet again. Sammy Davis Jr. saying, uh, be kind, be nice, and I hope the next performer has the pleasure of having as nice an audience as you've been tonight. And let me leave you swinging. <laughs> <laughs>